Yo, pick in the chat is a guy the first no who wants to debate you. You should drag him in your Discord and chat in a thing. Dude, thinking. I just want to build pretty planners and shit, okay? Do I really need to debate this guy right now? What does he even want to talk about? I don't think I've ever had this before. I wanted to debate your view of reason itself. I think you can't sustain your presuppositions that are required for all your other beliefs. What, can you give me like an example of what you mean by that? Reason on atheism requires free will, but free will is no grounding in naturalism. I'd also mention the evolutionary argument against naturalism and Boltzmann brains. I only know what like half of those words mean. Um, but I don't believe in free will at all. I don't think free will is required for you to be an atheist at all either. I don't know how those two things are connected. Like, I don't think those two things are connected in any way, size, shape, or form. Unless you've like explicitly connected them as a person if you say it, but I've never heard that you need to believe in free will to be an atheist. Are you perhaps deterministic? Um, I don't like to say deterministic because when I say deterministic, it results in a whole bunch of autistic, like, some really stupid objections. But yeah, I pretty much am. Um, or if I'm not deterministic, I, I mean, because people always bring up some weird Copenhagen quantum bullshit. If I say no, I'm not deterministic, I mean, I would very easily say free will definitely doesn't exist in any size, shape, or form. Unless you do, like, in a weird compatibilist sense. Um, but, um, yeah, I'll say that much. The term you're looking for is probabilistic? Sure. That doesn't really speak to whether or not you have free will or not, though. I would say I absolutely don't believe in free will. Whether or not the universe is predetermined or not, I d don't have the necessary background to say. I assume when Destiny said he believed that things were deterministic, that was the same saying they were predetermined. I could get on board with that, I suppose. Well, even if I say they're not deterministic, I have zero, absolutely zero, zero belief in any form of free will whatsoever. Zero. Absolutely zero. I don't think that you can possibly believe in it without entertaining some type of delusion, is what I would say. I don't think you can argue for the validity of reason, given your belief that human beings cannot choose anything. Your thoughts are the result of atomic interactions, nothing more. Okay, how are those two statements contradictory? I mean, I believe in the latter, but I don't know why that means you can't... I mean, like, if you live in a deterministic system, you you just act as though you're not part of one, kind of, in some ways, right? I mean, if you're talking about my ability to make moral judgments or something, I mean, you could argue that maybe, that I'm not capable of doing that, which is a fair criticism, but... I think he's arguing that the concept of objective reason doesn't work in purely materialistic system because reason is not materialistic. What is that? Um, huh? I, I don't know even. if that's true or not. Non-deterministic doesn't mean free will exists. You couldn't. You could have two possible outcomes in a situation and no control. Yeah, unsettled goat. That's why I don't like it when people think when I when I concede the non-deterministic thing. People think that magically gets them to free will, but it doesn't at all. But a lot of people make that decision like, oh, okay, well, and I totally agree with you. And it's like, well, no, I don't think you do. But <laughs> people think there's all or nothing absolutes. Like there has to be two options, and you have to pick one type of reality. Well, kind of. It's. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Fuck. You don't know. It's true. I'm just kidding, I know everything. Uh... I doubt you're a true atheist, given your humanistic moral standpoint and your dialect dialectical opposition to discussing the existence of an absolute cosmic entity due to the confabula- I'm pretty sure you're making words up. Due to the confabulation induced by your destitute upbringing, I could elucidate my points more clearly over voice. <laughs> nice job, dude. I tip, tip, tip to you, m'lady. M'lady. <laughs> Determinism needs materialism slash physicalism a little to work. How do you explain determinism if you apply that reality as a duality to itself? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure you would describe me as a materialist, right? Materialism is the belief that everything is physical, that there's nothing supernatural. Is, is it not that everything arises from physical properties? Hold on, I have to look this up to make sure I'm not talking shit. Materialism is a form of philosophical monoism, which holds that matter is the fundamental substance of nature, and that all things, including mental aspects and consciousness, are results of material interactions. Yeah, correct. So you would, I'm pretty sure, every time I say you would call me this, somebody emails me for I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure I would be considered a materialist. Determinism does not require physicalism or materialism. Whatever non-material ontology someone wants to posit could easily be deterministic. Yeah, that's true too, Koag. I just didn't want to argue with the guy because he was using a lot of big words. He was, he was intimidating me, but that seems right as well, right? Couldn't you posit that a god exists? That, like, um, for instance, um, well, actually, this is a common religious belief, right? Is the idea of a clockmaker god that the universe is in a sense determined, but God set everything in motion at the very beginning. So this would be a non-materialistic um, origin of the universe that is still deterministic in nature, right? Medieval Christianity is actually a big contributor to determinism. Ah, there was, um, I believe, in early forms of 
Puritanism um, was the idea, I believe it was called, the religious name for it is predetermination, or it might be predestination, and it's the idea that whether or not you go to heaven is actually determined at the moment of birth or conception or whatever, that nothing you did will can ever, like, get you into heaven, if that makes sense. Hmm, interesting. Now, of course, I know that technically nothing you do can get you to heaven, because we only get to heaven by the grace of God, etc. I, shh, please don't, yeah, but... But it was the idea that, like, whether or not you would go to heaven, I think, was determined at birth. Calvinism. Yeah, okay. The argument is God knows the future, therefore there can only be one future, therefore the future is determined. I'm familiar with the syllogism, but the Christian argument, I believe, that, like, a priest would give you is the idea that um, it's still your choice to make. God just knows what choice you'll make. That kind of sounds pretty de predetermined, though, right? I don't know. I don't know. Go ask a religious dude how they rationalize. <laughs> I don't fucking... I'm in general chat. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk to a guy for a sec. Do you want me to drag him in here or do you want... I don't care. Whatever you want to do. Uh, yeah, I'll just shut up. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Or I, I just don't want to spam or flood your stream. Yeah, 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 that's good. You're okay. good. All I'm right. Mute. You're here, buddy. What's up? Oh, hey. Uh, <laughs> let me turn off, turn off chat. So uh, basically, this was all related to the gun control debate because he linked me to your point. And, and my issue is uh, on determinism, you're not able to cho choose between options, right? You, you have... Atomic interactions, energy interactions, and it all essentially determines your thoughts. You don't have reason that imposes itself on your choices. You simply do what you are predetermined to do. So, okay, wait, wait, hold so on, hold on. I just want to, wait, wait, wait. Go just because we're having this conversation, I want to be super, super, super clear on all the terms. So yeah, I would sure. disagree when you say you don't have reason because it's predetermined. So I would argue okay. that I could program an addition algorithm into a calculator that takes three plus three and outputs six. Now, mm -hmm. that is a form of reason, and it's using logic to determine the answer. Now, even though the answer is predetermined, that reason still exists. Um, I don't know how this is going to come up okay. later about it. So I, I wouldn't oh, yeah. I wouldn't say that reason can't exist in a predetermined system, um, just that things are arguably predetermined or whatever. Okay, sorry. So, so what, yeah, yeah, cool. What, what you're essentially saying, though, I believe, is that like if, if an atom interacts with another atom, there is a reason for their interaction. That's that's not the way I'm using reason here. I'm using reason oh. in the sense of the ability to, to, dis, uh, to come to a conclusion given evidence to choose between options, weigh the options, and choose rationally which one is superior. Um, like, uh, you're, you're hinting at something that uh, gets into a whole area of philosophy that's kind of cool. It's the Chinese room problem of can you l make a machine that can think? Yeah, I'm but, familiar but with I it, think, and I don't like the problem. Yeah, yeah I'm familiar with it. Yeah. But uh, I, I don't think that's actually the core issue. I think the simple fact is, do you believe that when you come to a conclusion, you are able to come to a different conclusion? No, I don't believe that. Okay, so well, so let really, me. Let, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me just because the really small caveat. Okay, um, I would yeah, say I do not believe I could come to a um, different conclusion, except possibly if there is some weird quantum meme that causes an electron or something oh, yeah, to move yeah. in a different. But but yeah, but assuming that assuming that we are, are excluding all of that kind of um, bullshit, I would argue that yes, yeah, right. so whatever conclusion I came to, it was the only conclusion I could have ever come to. Correct. Right, and, and the reason I, I wouldn't even get to the quantum state issue is because that's not actually addressing the, the free will argument. Yeah, that's I understand. still an external external cause. That you have that's, no control over. Yeah. So so really you you haven't reasoned to your conclusions. You merely your brain is the result of physical, physical interactions. Interaction. Correct. Okay. Uh, so uh, which which I find interesting. I, I, I wouldn't therefore hold reason in high supremacy in your view, right? Like it, it doesn't mean a lot. You just what's the difference between reason and being the result of you know indoctrination they're both the result of atomic interactions correct there is no so difference. there's i don't know how to i don't know how to verbalize this well um mainly because okay. i'm not interested in doing it uh, but i know other people yeah. have done it better than i can but they're like the idea is that even if you live from a third party position we live in a in a predetermined okay. system you would you wouldn't yeah. function in that predetermined system as though you you would function as though you had free will right or even if you acknowledge yeah, that things are predetermined, you, it, that still doesn't change the way that you act, I guess, if that makes sense. Yeah, but I don't know if we should we should found our perspectives on the idea that we should live like this is all illusory. Like, yes, you're predetermined, but pretend you're not. Like, I mean, can you can you see the issue? Well, I'm, I'm, if you, I'm, I'm, I'm I kind of understand, that. but like if you take it to like the next level, then you can live like yeah. it's predetermined, but that shouldn't change anything with how you act. Well, like, you, can you give me an you, example of, of something that changes? Or so, I'm sorry, I keep hitting you off. You, uh, finish your point. 
Oh, no, no. Uh, I just find it interesting that you're saying you can choose to do something. Well, well really, you can't choose to do anything. You, you just, you're, you're even predetermined in the thought that you should pretend you're not predetermined. Like, exactly, yeah. Even that itself is predetermined. Exactly. And I so, would agree with that. So, yeah. there, so what, I mean, this also gets to the mind-body problem, which you, you looked at uh, the, the definition of materialism. And one of the issues with materialism is that it re generally requires you to deny the existence of the unembodied, or the, the existence of the mind. Pretty much, the mind yeah. Or, or rather, yeah, I yeah. only view it as an extraction, or not an extraction, as a um, as an abstraction of uh, yeah. interacting underlying physical processes. Correct. Oh yeah, and, and definitely. And so the, I mean, there's a couple issues I would I would take with that perspective because I think the reason I'm kind of going on this tangent is that you need the mind in order to have a non-physical entity. Otherwise, every physical entity is a result of prior physical interactions. Like, so your position on atheism, I think, makes mm -hmm. complete sense. I think. The issue, though, is that you do not have reason as, uh, don't want to use overly complicated words because it just obviously sure. Or just use them and define them for me and I can, I can learn them, it's fine. Yeah, so uh, ontological, like ontological is the, the study of what is really mm -hmm. real. Epistemology is how we learn something, but ontology is what is really real. You don't have an ontological grounding for reason. Reason is just, I mean, it's the same thing as delusion. It's the same thing as illusion. It's the same thing as hallucination. It's the same thing as indoctrination. There is no difference because there's no such thing as a mental state. Now, I would take issue with this mm -hmm. um, because in, uh, for, for one thing, in philosophy, you can distinguish between two things if they are not identical, if what is true of one is not true of the other, right? So if we can find one thing, one thing that is true of your mental state, that is not true of the physical world, we can distinguish between those, or specifically the brain. If we can distinguish between the mind and the brain, and even one area, they are not identical, and therefore can't be be uh, be con uh, confused. Uh, and so so one is basically the aboutness of your thoughts. So uh, a, a physical atom is, is something. It is an ion, or is interacting with uh, a chemical. It, is these states, and you can learn about these states, but your thoughts are about things. Atoms are not about other things. Atoms simply so are. So I think my yeah. argument here would be that I would take mm -hmm. issue with your defining that mental states are not about things, and I would just argue that we don't no, have the technology to sufficiently measure it. Okay, sorry, uh, I, I don't mean, sorry. I mean, uh, our mental faith states are about things. I mean, this is obvious. You think about things. You're okay, thinking sure. about my argument right now. Sure. And so, but no physical no physical entity is about something else in and of itself oh, okay. like an atom is not about another atom gotcha right? but but it but again i feel is. like i think you'd know my response to all of this right i would argue that all of these things could be traced to discrete like physical processes we just don't have the sufficient technology to do so right this would be my okay response. now this this does feel like an appeal to ignorance right you're, you're basically saying I, your position you can never be dissuaded from because you'll always appeal. Right? Well, okay, but my position is my position is rooted in the idea that every other thing in the entire universe mm -hmm. that we have ever explored has always been materialistic in nature. This is the only that, thing, and I think I have decent grounds to stand on that analyzing the discrete mental states of people is very, very, very complicated. I think I, can, I feel comfortable in saying that this is probably also a materialistic thing because every other non-materialistic thing that we have discovered or, or researched has been materialistic. I think I, I have, okay, does that make sense? What's your response to yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, obviously I would I would disagree. I, I disagree, I try to watch a couple of your videos. Sure. I can watch a lot because uh, well, can you, little kids. When you, say you, uh, when you say you disagree, in what sense, yeah. what part of that I, do you well, disagree? Well, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Christian theist, and I, I, I have a lot of my grounding on um, the apologetic arguments that take essential scientific premises or um, philosophical premises and reach uh, deductive conclusions. So I don't simply go faith, faith, faith. I also think we probably would disagree what faith is. But I would say that on on the evidence, I would say that I, I would actually reject the claim that the, the universe looks materialistic for a number of reasons. Um, okay, can you give me one reason? Yeah, sure. Uh, so this actually would get to another, I think your, your given answer would probably get to another argument against um, the issue of reason. So um, this is called the teleological argument and basically the fine tuning of the universe. Yeah, I'm familiar with the teleological argument. Okay. Okay. But what happens uh, when I plug so, what happens when you plug God into the first premise of the teleological argument? Doesn't it turn into yeah, itself? So, I wait, well, you know, so the the premise is the uh, this the simple simple syllogism is 
the fine tuning of the universe is a result of chance, design, or necessity. It is uh -huh. not the result of chance or necessity. Therefore, it is design. Uh, so I don't know where you're saying plug in God. And I'm sorry. For well. Is the teleological argument essentially argues that the universe is so complicated and so finely tuned that it must have been created by someone else, right? Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. On, on probability. We're yeah. not dealing with absolute sure. certainty, so, but I would say... I would yeah, so my evidence. question is, why can't I say that God is so um, is so fine-tuned and so perfect that oh, he yeah. wasn't created cool. by someone else? So I think we're, we're confusing the ideas of God with the being of God, that God's being is not complicated. God is an unembodied mind. He, he like... a. Uh, Edward Fezzer, the, the philosopher, or Fezzer, the, the philosopher basically said, from a Thomist perspective, God is absolutely simple. Like, he doesn't have moving parts. He doesn't have atoms that compose him. But God being pretty simple, he doesn't have a limitation on his knowledge. It's not like an arbitrary limitation that's complicated. No, he simply has all knowledge. He ha simply has all logical power. I feel like, uh, you, I feel like you're trying to win this... Um... What would I? What would I say? Ta tautologically, like you're trying to give a definition to God that makes it so you win the argument. Like you, you have a definition <laughs> that an all-powerful being that can manipulate yeah. everything in time and space and matter and every individual person and read every. And you're arguing through your redefining of words that this entity is simple. That I feel like I would take issue with that. Well, well, can you agree that on a Christian theistic perspective, God is not a physical being, like by nature? Well, right. yeah, but it, but that's that, but, I mean, that's, 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 but that's not fair because you, because again, like you're winning your argument on definition, like you're you're essentially begging the question. It, so I mean, how so? Well, because you're essentially saying that like okay, the universe um, is so finely tuned and and so crazy, magnificently perfect that it must have been created by something that that had a hand in designing this. And then I go, okay, uh, well, no. why why can't I? Well, I'm sorry, am I misstating that? No, no, no. Finish your thought. Yeah. So then I so then I would say, okay, well, if you want to claim that 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 is not that the universe can't possibly exist without having been pre-designed, then I would argue that all the properties that I give the universe, you give to God. So why can't I say that God must have been designed by someone else? And then it becomes progressive. And uh, then you redefine God to say, well, no, he's actually really simple, which... Okay, I, I understand I understand your critique, but uh -huh. I, I really don't think... Uh, historical theology, I mean, e like, go back as far as you want. It has always had the presupposition that God is not a physical entity. So so simple, simple fact, if I point out, like, the the fine-tuning of the uh, low entropy conditions of the initial universe. Like, that's not a property you can assign to God. He's not a physical entity. It, it simply can't be applied to him. He just is a spiritual, a spirit, a spiritual being. So so this isn't me begging well, I, this qu the question, not winning by definition. This has simply always been the historical, theistic understanding of what God is. Like, I'm not begging the question. This is simply what they've, what Christianity and theism in general has always held to. Okay, I... I still disagree that I, I, I okay so explain so if God exists as something that is mm -hmm. capable of creating the universe why can't yeah. I ascribe to him properties that by your own syllogism would make it necessary that somebody defined him because he exists outside of sure. the universe or sure, because because the the properties that I'm specifically can address are physical properties they by definition would not apply to a non-physical entity like that that's definition so complexity is so, a physical property to you I don't. I, well, no, I rejected. I rejected complexity. I, I said we need to. We need to distinguish God's thoughts and God's being. That God is not a physical being. He's not a complex being in the sense of all these moving parts. God is not like that. He is. He's actually simple. He. He doesn't have this. This complexity to him. Um, and so the the fine tuning, however, like the low initial low entry conditions, is astronomically fine tuned to the point okay, where it's. it's Okay, so I still don't like the way that you let God escape the, the, the syllogism, but we'll, we'll move past that because I also don't like the way that you say the, the universe was fine-tuned in the beginning. Um, sure. So, for instance, if I were to take a, um, if I were to take, um, if I were to take like a, like a bag full of marbles and, and mm -hmm. shake them in the sky and then release them and let them fall to the ground and let them scatter in whatever position they wind up would be a, a, a one in a trip or, or actually we can make this more simple um shuffling a deck of cards right that if, that if mm -hmm. we shuffle a deck of cards um whatever whatever you shuffle the deck of cards as it'll be the only time in the history of all of mankind that it's ever been shuffled in that way the odds of shuffling right. a deck together the same two times is it's 52 factorial it's it's a massively right. huge number um however 
I, I, there's there's a name for this fallacy, but I don't know what it is. But like, you can't say that just because it wound up in some way that it was supposed to wind up that way, or that it was fine tuned for it to wind up that way. So, for instance, okay. life exists on Earth not because the sun was put in the perfect position for life to exist in this way, but rather life grew around the initial starting conditions. The conditions weren't made okay. to create life; life just happened out of the initial conditions. Is what I would say. Yeah, Sorry, yeah, I, I absolutely understand. Yeah, no, you're 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 absolutely right that this is generally the contention that an atheist will throw out. There's a couple of problems with this. Um, the first is that we are specifying the, the, the issue of complexity prior. So so I, I know we, we have now existed after the, the issue of the Big Bang, but imagine that, let's go with your first analogy, you threw the marbles up in the air and they land and they spell out destiny, I am God, I exist, worship me. You would, you would assign some level of significance to that. Okay, right? okay, but there's a problem with this analogy is that you have assigned okay. a special property to humans. So I don't want to use the begging the question again but your argument almost becomes circular you are saying because my argument is that humans aren't anything special we're part of the materialistic universe like anything else so when you say well look at how crazy it is that something as complex as humans exist i would argue no, no, that no, we're just or, okay uh, well because it may, you make it sound like that because like the marble spells something out that makes them special i mean i would oh, argue no. that humans are nothing special we just happen to no. result out of the okay go ahead sorry the, the the my point there and i wasn't clear my point there is that when these marbles spelled out something there's there's like a, an intelligence to it right i mean just answer me honestly like if you threw the balls and they fell in the pattern destiny i'm god worship me would you like would you consider that different from if they were a random scattering messed around right yeah i would you, you i would, would accept that but i'm rejecting and, the dichotomy and why is that okay so Be why is that, that because you it, that because because it appears it has, ordered right yeah, absolutely. It appears ordered. So the low entry conditions of the initial universe are not something that you really work around. Like if you don't get the low entry conditions, you don't get a universe at all. You get you get either a singularity or you get atoms not forming together. The low entropy condition is the oh, probability of getting one. Th this, so this sounds like an appeal to ignorance because we can't precisely measure the beginning oh, states of the universe. Like now we have to say. No, th no, this is actually actually surprisingly the opposite. So. Uh, Gosh, you, you may be able to help me out here. Who was the, the person who came up with like the the equation to figure out how many intelligent alien planets, uh, intelligent species exist out in the universe by multiplying the number? Oh, of there's planets a name right for there. this, and I don't remember. Yeah, it. The, the whatever. Sorry. I'm equation. sure chat chat will pop it up. Yeah. But um, but the the issue issue with that is at the time he wrote that the the con fine tuning conditions were were kind of small now it's only gone in one direction to more and more fine tuning like we actually understand these really well like science is understanding more and more how fine-tuned it is and this isn't like you know the earth is fine-tuned and uh you know human beings look at and impressive no this is this is simply the issue of you don't get atoms if you don't get these finely tuned equations if you don't get these finely tuned constants right like you don't get stars you don't get any of this it's not simply you don't get humans you get a different animal it's you don't get matter and so so this is the this is the issue and and here's here's the crux of it is like the lone initial entropy conditions throughout a number is one out of ten to the tenth to the one hundred and twentieth like uh in order for the solar system as, as we experience it now you sitting there at your computer me sitting at mine um you, you see uh, you see at yours me sitting at mine if this was all to randomly form by atoms colliding in, and we all have our memories like this the chance of that is one out of ten to the tenth to the sixtieth uh like this but that's, that's is roger that's okay roger said, that's okay that's for me though chicken feet. That's no 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 no, no but I, I, but i'm okay with that the, the difference Excellent. is so, you're the one that's saying that ahead. it seems like you're making the argument that this is some special thing. Like I acknowledge that it could have been a million different other things or different ways, or maybe oh. life wouldn't exist at all. Like I don't think that human humanity is any kind of special thing. Oh no. no. So uh, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. My my point there was that this actually gets to the the Boltzmann Boltzmann brain issues. And someone corrected my spelling, and I do apologize for that. It's uh, B O L T Z M A N N, and this has a lot to do with the multi world hypothesis. So one of the ways atheists will escape this is say this possibility of multiple universe. And you haven't said that. No, I but don't the, believe in that. But okay. 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 Well, the underlying issue with this and and with what you said is that it is much more likely for a universe with an intelligent creature to be a universe where a brain, singular brain, pops into existence, is deluded about its surroundings, then pops out of existence. It is more likely that you, Destiny, are that, given given just the, the fact that that is the more likely assembly of atoms. So by sheer probability, given what you know about the universe, that should be how you 
perceive of life well, because I... it is it is astronomically more probable than the the massive universe we actually see with its fine tuning constants and qualities. I feel like there are a ton of baked in assumptions there that I would challenge, like so many of those. Okay. Um, w w you think it's more likely that my brain popped into existence out of nowhere and that I am conceiving of a universe rather than the universe actually existing and being observed? Correct, correct. Why? Because the, okay, because again, like it, even just this solar system to, to randomly assemble, like not the way it did through through the stellar evolution, but simply random atoms bumped into each other, boom, the solar system is one out of 10 to the 10th to the 60th. And Roger Penrose, the uh, astronomer said that this is utter chicken feed compared to the low entropy condition number. So, but that is much more likely than the universe as we see it. Not only that, but imagine what the most simplistic universe is that could have an intelligent being in it, a being that is aware of its surroundings. Well, as far as we know, from a physicalist perspective, a naturalist perspective, it would be a single brain pops into existence in a tiny universe, deludes itself about what is its surroundings. Like, this is just smaller okay, amount okay, of atoms. Okay, oh, yeah, hold on, hold on. Okay, I, I feel like this is at the crux of our argument, and you keep saying it's yeah. not, but we have to reconcile this. It, so okay. it, the, the difference between our positions, and, and maybe you can tell me why I'm wrong on this, because I think we keep going back to this. It really does seem to me like you ascribe very special things, very special properties to the universe that exists today. Like, I can't see why else you would keep bringing up the idea that it's a one out of, you know, 50 quadrillion chance of this even happened. Like, I know that the chances of our universe existing as is is, is very slim, but I um, I could yeah. conceive a million other, trillion other universes that could consist. Ha, like, I don't see True. anything special about this particular universe. Okay, so so let me put it this way, because I think this, this may help out a little bit. Like, let's say there's a... Um, there's a firing squad you're you're some you're uh, condemned to be executed by a firing squad and you're blindfolded and they line up a hundred expert marksmen the countdown is given they fire the shots and the blindfold is taken off and all the shots miss and they do it again they do it again all the shots miss again now your friend turns to you and says oh don't don't worry about it it was just random chance i mean after all okay okay, okay. hold on hold on we're, we're, anywhere. we're super okay i'm 100 percent positive that we are not connecting on this topic now okay on every okay. single example that you're giving me you're you're I, yeah. I reject your dichotomy because you were giving me a binary success or failure on every example you've mm. given me which yeah. shows that you believe that the current universe is successful like the binary would be successful and any other type of universe would be a failure that's why in every no, no, example Okay, but, but, but in every so, example you're giving range. me, in every example you're giving me, you're saying that like, imagine there is a hundred people lined up against the wall, and then it just happened to not hit your friend. This is this is pass mm -hmm. or fail, or like marbles yeah. drop on the floor and create some specific condition that's pass or failure. But but I don't I don't yeah. view the universe as this pass or failure kind of way. I think that it could have existed in a trillion other kinds of things. And okay, yeah. And, and yeah, and see, I would I would agree actually with you on this. I would say that there were lots of combinations, and just for the sake of argument, lots of combinations that could have intelligent life on Earth or in different planets or you know different type of universe. Okay. However, with when you look outside of that range that could potentially have life, I mean, like let's say you require it to be outside of a you know um, a singularity, right? You can't have really life at a singularity, so it can't be a singularity. It can't be where all the atoms are completely spread out in a in a uh, absolutely chaotic, pure entropy condition. You can't have that. It has to be some semblance of interaction between the atoms. And so so there's a range that it, that you have to get, right? So what we do is we compare how many options are within that range that could support life, even like, let's be generous to the, the atheist, and how many are outside of that. That's what Roger Penrose pointed out, is that even just one constant, and there are tons, even one constant, the low entropy condition is so astronomically impossible. So I, I don't say impossible. It was so astronomically improbable that it just simply boggles the mind. We can't conceive of a billion of something. How can we conceive of 10 to the 10 to the 120th uh, of something? But like you're baking are, in so many good... other types of assumptions here. Like life could even exist in ways that I think we haven't fathomed. Like don't, are there are theoretical constructs for like how uh, methane based life forms, like not even carbon based life forms could exist. I'm like really uncomfortable with this characterization that we understand the big, and I, I've got a friend that does physics a lot. I can bring him in, maybe he can speak to it better, but like I'm really uncomfortable saying that we understand the origination of the universe so well okay. that we can start to characterize the possibilities of intelligent life existing when intelligent life could exist in ways that we don't even possibly understand like that seems like a okay. huge assumption to make so do you think that life could possibly exist as singularity what do you mean by singularity i mean this every single 
out of all the energy of the universe crammed into one spot, I mean, with, with zero space to it. It could, but it's that's unfathomable to me. But Okay, uh, do you think it could exist when there's atoms, but not a single inter atom interacts with each other? I don't think life can exist. What we define as life can exist as an atom or a single atom or a subatomic particle that doesn't interact with anything. I would agree with that. Okay, so so you would agree that there are, they're even given your position, like even if I if if I go with it and say let's appeal to ignorance, we don't know maybe, like you would agree that there are ranges outside this. That there are ranges outside what? What do you mean by that? Out, out, ranges that are outside of uh, that the possibility of life existing. You cannot outside of this area have life at a, a potentially a singularity, but definitely at the point where atoms are not interacting or energy does not interact at all. Like there, there are areas that you would also agree do not have the possibility of having life. Sure. Yes. Okay. So, so what would be our best way of determining how many potential areas are inside and outside? I would say a physicist would be, would be a good bet. And so that's why I'm going with Roger Penrose's number. He says the low entropy conditions needed for the, the universe to form in a conceivable way for some sort of life to, to form. Like, I mean, talking atoms interacting with each other. The, the, like, if you get too much entropy, the, the atoms don't interact with each other. It's, it's uh, basically like a sea of particles sure. without, without much interaction. Okay, so can I, well, okay, to, to, speak to, to speak to the Penrose thing, can I drag a physicist yeah. student here real quick just so, so I can understand? Sure. Okay, Coag, you're in here. Penrose, physical, Big Bang, um, chances of our universe having anything interacting with it is very low. Can you, can you speak on this? Or? Yeah, so I mean, what? Well, hold on, can you hear me? Wait, wait, shit, hold on. He just left the channel. Maybe he got deuced. Oh, wait, hold on one second. Um, all right, sorry, I dragged you back in. You got disconnected. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, all right, go uh, for it. I missed it. Yep. Okay. He's going yeah. Ahead. I mean, so there's a lot of underlying assumptions that aren't really being addressed here. So okay. this kind of all started with the teleological argument. So Destiny kind of kind of finally just hit one of the points that I wanted him to hit, which is mm -hmm. what do you mean by fine tuning precisely? Okay. So so fine tuning is actually a pretty well defined term within within physics. The idea no, I is know, that, but I just I want yeah. you to explicitly state it so I can. Kind of okay, fi fine-tuning is simply that in order for a certain outcome, a certain set of outcomes or outcomes to be feasible, you have to have a certain no a certain number of, or a certain constant or a certain range of constants in order to get that. Like, that's finely tuned. That, that there are lots of options, but most of the options will not get a result that is positive. Fine-tuning is the narrowing of that. You, you have only a few of the options. Or what? Or, or I mean... So you're speaking vaguely in terms of oh, yeah, yeah, some sure. set of sure. conditions. Uh, life, conditions life at all. Or what? Life at all being possible. Any life at all. Life not human at life. all being possible. Can you please yes. give me a scientifically rigorous definition of life? Uh, sure. So science has several categories of life, and they, they aren't always mutually excuse. The, the, uh, the ability of a... Uh, the organism in question to reproduce um, to like I, this this is a, a whole subject for debate, but I I, I believe you would agree that. Okay, so, hey, do you want me to do you want me to pop yeah. up the, the article and just read off a couple of them? No, I, that, that could be the, the okay. point that I'm trying to elucidate here is there is no good formal definition for life, right? Life okay. is kind of a concept in biology that life is as life does. We call it as we see it. It's more of an ostensible definition. Okay. okay. We have an incredibly biased picture of what life is and could be. So when we say, this is kind of what Destiny was bringing up earlier, there are only a set of cosmologies that would allow for life as we know it to exist yeah. is yeah. an incredibly naive statement because okay. we have no idea what actually constitutes life, right? Is it is it the things that you were describing? Is it metabolism, reproduction, et cetera, et cetera? Or is it just information processing of some kind, right? Okay, so wait, information I will, processing. I will worry about a fine tuning problem in the context of producing life when we have a more rigorous, serious definition of what exactly constitutes life. Until that okay. point, it is not a good conversation to be had, and it's especially not a good conversation to stake the teleological argument of religious apologetics on. Okay, well, well, let me let me ask you simply this: Could any feasible system of life, and, and then you can give me an example of, of 
feasible system of life exist as a singularity? And, and then you can explain what you mean by a possible life. I'll, I'll say no, given on what I know, but... Okay, excellent. So, much. Okay, do you think that life could exist where there is zero interaction between subatomic particles? Okay, so um, probably not in the understanding okay. of what I'm... So what I would agree call that... life? But what do you mean? No interactions between subatomic particle particles, right? Okay. You are so, arbitrarily so, saying that the coupling constants, you would know what they would be in this set of cosmologies. Right. I do I not mean, think you... you know that because guess what? People like Stephen Hawking do not know what that those coupling constants are, right? We cannot explore this space or else we would have the solution to the measure problem, right? Well, I mean this, this is this, an outstanding this, problem in modern cosmology. This is not yeah, something yeah. No, that I know. I understand that, but the low entropy conditions, if you're getting if you're getting on either end of the scale, you're getting like just the I mean, really on, on, on one end of the scale predominantly, you're just simply not getting interaction between particles, which you would agree would constitute You're not getting interactions with particles given the standard model that we have, which is an effective field theory built upon quantum field theory that we have no basis in applying to other sets of cosmology with fundamentally different coupling constants. Okay, yeah, so let me give an analogy. Um, so SETI looks into space and they, they, they look for information from space, right? They're, they're trying to, to get uh, to, to hear from aliens. Now, what are they listening for? Generally, some kind of well, obviously they're looking for radiation because they're using SETI, and it, you know we hope to see some type of thing that we would expect uh, is significantly different from noise, right? Maybe a string of prime numbers, something like that. Interesting. So, so why yes, those? I, I don't understand why you're trying to make this point. Yes, we have things to look for to narrow our space of search because we have a naive idea of what life should be. Now, so what if I said, wait, hang on, search. hang on, like. No, if we could get a, a string of information that comes from space that says we are aliens, we come in peace, and then a person could say, no, we simply don't have enough knowledge to know what kind of physical, non-intelligent entities that can produce this string of information. That is to the argument I'm making, even in principle. Oh, oh, it, well, no, it is, because here's the issue. No, it's not. You're, what, I, what I would say is I would give you that because a rational updating of a Bayesian credence would tell you, yes, the prior being that you see this uh, string of information that generally does not arise in nature, right, because that's how we tell design from chance and nature is we compare it to thing that, things that we know are designed. Okay. Can, can, can so, I, for a quick point that's related, so I just want to chime in real quick yeah. too. Like, another problem is we only have our one universe to compare this with. So, and again, like, this is why I keep trying to back up first and, and rejecting the, this entire dichotomy. This idea that there, are, uh, like, you're saying that there are certain things that we recognize as being intelligent life. Well, that's because this is the universe that we have. Like, it's totally possible that in a totally different universe, like, there are other things that would allow us to recognize possible intelligent life too, right? Again, Destiny, remember, I, I even I even gave you that argument. I, like, uh -huh. I'm not even going contest it and said even then you would agree that there are things outside the parameters for which life cannot possibly exist like it well just, yeah but even, th this was this yeah. was the idea that you were trying to claim or we're claiming that we understand and you can tell me if i'm mischaracterizing this um the idea that Go we ahead. understand the initial conditions of the universe well enough to say that it is highly unlikely that any two a atomic things would have ever interacted with one another right was your initial yeah so so Again, part of part of this low entropy condition is simply the the interactions of the, the particles. They, they, yeah. you have enough chaos, you're, you're not going to get particle interaction. Which is something that like, I don't I don't know if that's true. I have a really hard time believing that that's something that physicists okay. like super strongly believe in, and that's I, I don't know the answer to that. Okay, well, uh, I mean, in, in chat later, I can I can link to Roger Penrose's work on the subject or, or some other. Sure. What what uh, is what is Roger ones. what is Roger Penrose? Uh, Roger Penrose is actually one of one of the most. I, uh, your physicist friend, if he's still in here, uh -huh. uh, may be able to chime in. Uh, yeah, he's... I mean, I don't, I don't. So you keep invoking. So what, what what you're invoking is something called the passive hypothesis, right? The, the boundary. I'm sorry, sorry, say again. I can hear you. Uh, the thing that you're invoking is this thing called the past hypothesis, is what it's been formally named, and it's this idea that at the boundary conditions of our uh, classical description of the universe, I might add, this is a classical description of the beginning of the universe because. It's general relativity, which assumes a background classical space-time. Um, but there was an incredibly low entropy, and uh, 
kind of just have to posit it ad hoc. Currently, there are working solutions to this and people doing things like quantum gravity, uh, people doing quantum cosmology, right? This is all speculative stuff, but there are purported solutions to things like the past hypothesis. So I don't understand... So a lot of a lot of these purported solutions are generally, yeah, a lot of these purported solutions are generally invoking fine tuning in a different sense. Like, okay, we're gonna posit the multiverse, but the multiverse generator is a finely tuned thing. Therefore, we solve the fine tuning problem. Like, I, I mean, there's there's an issue with some of these, and so I want to I want to stick to this issue uh, and I go back to the the issue of the analogy that I had before because we look at certain things like the information quantity the information content of the destiny I'm God worship me and we we see significance for specific reasons there's specific reasons that certain patterns denote some level of intelligence there's certain reasons that if we got a message from space that said we are aliens we come in peace we would denote we wouldn't simply go hey what we what we know about space is so amorphous. We we maybe this is there's something out there that produces this information string of we are aliens, we come in peace. Therefore, we really cannot conclude that there's an, any intelligent life out okay, there. Okay, but I still don't like this statement because it sounds like you're making the assumption that this universe we know that because all of the fuck. I wish I had a better way to, to explain this, but like it sounds like you're saying that we know how the universe exists in this one way. So if we see something inside this universe, that all of a sudden means we can say that it only can exist. In this way and i feel like there's a really okay. bad assumption that that's not you can't make right. that assumption it is so, a bad assumption which is why i'm giving a range again so, I'm so to, can i just formalize this really quickly because uh, you brought it up and then destiny responded and this is the second time it's come up so this is essentially a watchmaker argument. i mean when yes. you can see that what you're making is a watchmaker argument yeah. you are comparing yeah. life to what you know life behaves like right but in no. reality if you're gonna no, no, no. if you're going to extend this to the cosmological picture you are attempting to compare a watch that you found on the beach to a beach full of watches, essentially, right? There is no other comparison. Wait, what? What are the watches in your situation? In your so you know Paley's watchmaker argument. Yeah, yeah no, no. But what are what is, watch you said, on the... Hang on, you said a beach full of watches. What is that uh, analogy towards? The beach full of watches. It's meant to show that the mechanism by which you are by which you are deriving the idea of design, right? You say, oh, this message comes from space. It seems as though it's, you know, highly complex, something that wouldn't occur by chance. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, here's the watch that I found on the beach. My point is that if you try and extend that to the cosmological picture, you are comparing a watch that you found on a beach full of watches. Right. right. We have what, no what other watches? idea what these cosm other cosmologies so, are like. You keep saying a beach full of watches. What is the beach full of watches? I, did, are you not following Destiny? I mean, it's, are, are you, I'm, are, I'm saying, are you saying that the beach full of watches are other possible universes where life could be exist, or within this universe, there are multiple areas where life could exist. I, I need. Yeah, I need oh, yeah. So, uh, if you're confused about that, yeah. So, I'm making the watchmaker analogy there in terms of different cosmologies, right? So, not within, okay, yes, but different so, so, cosmologies. Yes. Yes. Again, remember, I'm not specifically going at one watch. I'm saying all watches in general, like like your beach, your your beach of watches would not point us to watches being produced naturally. It point us to a, a plane crashing and watches falling out, falling out of a box, like simply finding more of something wouldn't do anything to okay. simplify the fine tuning let, issue. So let, let me see if I can do this analogy, right? Okay. Cause, cause it sounds like what we're doing is we're using like an internal consistency to justify that this is the only platform that, that can exist. So let me see if this analogy fits. Okay. So let's say that you have a programming language like Python. Okay. Now, if you want to see if, uh, if, if other people, if other types of programmers exist, okay. The only way that you can do this is by looking for, say we have a, a giant, a, a petty, okay, a, a Python extraterrestrial investigation thing that looks for other intelligent life, and it looks for Python statements, okay? That if you were you were, you were were looking for these statements to see if other Python programmers, which is an analogous to hum humanity or intelligent life exists, right? Using this internal kind of um, rigor, we can say the only possible type of intelligent life that exists is life that can program in Python, right? But because we exist independent of this, we can say, well, no, look, there are tons of other types of programming languages that aren't Python. We know that. So for somebody to make the statement, well, if I don't find, you know, other Python, you know, snippets of code out in space, I know for a fact that no other programmers exist. We can go, well, no, that's ridiculous. Wait, this is actually really interesting. This would actually, this, this argument would actually go against your atheism because you'd say, we have this system of deducing whether God exists. And I don't think you, you put forward something like this. But if we don't prove that God exists with this system, therefore God does not exist, your, your argument would actually be detrimental to that, not to my argument. 
No, what, I, what I'm saying is that because you keep going back to the idea that we know what to look for when, when we know to look for life, therefore we know that life exists. Well, no, because we only have ourself to compare it to. The same way that the okay. person using the Python investigator would only have Python to compare it to. But we know that there are tons of other types of programming languages. So, like, True. in this universe, we have yes. what we consider to be life, but there could be tons of other types of life so that we either haven't fathomed or that another universe could have created, but we'll never know about it because we just can't conceive of other universes. Right, and remember, I actually, I actually gave you this for the sake of argument. I said, sure. Like, let's say there are tons of different types of watches you can have of all okay. varying complexities and different conditions and all that, all that sort of thing. I gave you that. I said, let's put a, a stopping point on one end and a stopping point on another end, where on one end is singularity. On the okay, okay, so th this is the thing that... Like yeah, so this is the thing that you keep mentioning that we have to just solve. Because it sounds like your argument keeps going back to the idea that the chances of our universe existing as a non-singularity are is accepted to be almost nothing. That seems to be what we keep going back to, right? Yeah, I mean, for for life in general, there's there's various constants and quantities, but I, I, I use low entropy condition because it is so finely sure. tuned that going over the odds of it are just Yeah, okay, so, so I, I understand. I, I, so would, I, would, can, can I we, would see the argument to Roger Penrose, go ahead. Do, do we, is that something that Penrose actually states, that the chances of our universe existing outside of a low entropy condition. I'm, not I'm just not particularly yeah, interested in what Roger Penrose has to say about this. He is not a working physicist and he is not a working cosmologist, right? If you want to know about the actual cosmological... He's, he's, he is a mathematical physicist. He's not a working cosmologist. When's the, when's the last thing that Penrose has published? In, uh, in I, I actually don't, I don't know that. Um, I mean, would, would, his, would his findings on the low entropy conditions be disproven by, by something you found? No. So what I am bringing up is that there is not an agreement that the low entropy boundary conditions of our universe is a problem depending on how you choose to solve it. It's like you talk about the problem, but then you don't actually talk about any of the people that are working to solve this problem. Okay. Okay. Let's let's actually actually stop right here for a moment. Let's mm -hmm. see if, if there is a possible way for you guys to be wrong. I just it's it's okay if you say no. I'm not, I'm not going to hold that against you. Uh, my, my point is, let's say that the fine-tuning of the universe could potentially be the result of an intelligence. Would there be any possible way for you guys to get past the, we just don't know, so we're going to say we, we'll keep looking until we find an answer conducive to our pre pre-gone conclusions? For me, any for me, other, I would be yeah. looking for some sort of materialistic evidence of that being true. That's what I would look for. Precisely, okay, so, right? I want a scientific way that I can demonstrate that particular position. Okay, such as some type of observable phenomenon that can be tested exactly. and retested, like I, the I mean, low entropy conditions. Uh, well, this is like, well, excuse me. <laughs> like this is low like low entropy conditions are something that could unequivocally have occurred naturally without. Impos uh, imposition of a divine authority figure. Right? No, they can't. They can't. This is the point. The you are positing them. that. That is, I'm telling you, as someone who is a scientist, not directly in this field, but who has poured through the literature on this topic, that is a lie. That is a bold-faced lie. What, what specifically is a lie? That, sorry. that the low entropy conditions of the universe that we have could not have occurred naturalistically. That is I didn't say that. I didn't you, say that. You just said that. You said that the low entropy conditions could not occur naturally without no, an interceding no. being. I, Destiny, did I ever say those words? It sounded like you said it, but maybe you meant to say. Okay. No, no. no. So, so then, then I, I obviously was not the one being clear. No, I'm saying we're dealing with probability. Yeah. I'm saying that's what is, you said initially it, to me that the chances of that right. happening are in, infinitesimally small or whatever. But yes. I think I think you yes, just said that it, that it couldn't occur. But but I assume you're. Oh mistaken. no no! I could. I said it could occur. Okay. I said okay, it could bad. occur naturally. That no, it could occur naturally. The point is the probability weight against it is so so one sided. When we've been looking at the fine tuning over the last like. 50 years, it hasn't gone in the direction of the universe coming to, to be less fine-tuned for life. All the constants, all the quantities have gone in one direction generally. One direction, and that is towards them being more, requiring more fine-tuning to have any type of conceivable life. I mean, oh, we're talking about on. the fundamental Did you just say that forces. the constants moved in a particular direction? The constants? Uh, no. no. You're going to have to completely, re what are you saying there? I, that oh, no, I, I think it's wrong. No, the the constants quantities are are required. Like, sorry, the the direction the constants of discovery. Are hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. In hang on. their name, the, constant. Okay, what no, no. What are you talking listen, about? Listen, the the direction discoveries 
have taken in the field is not towards us realizing that the universe is less and less fine tuned, right? It's towards more and more fine tuning. Like if we go back 50 years, we go back 50, like even 100 I years. I still don't like the, universe the word fine tuning because I feel like you're assuming the conclusion in the word that like. No, no, the fine tuning is not is not a a religious word. It doesn't okay. denote. Like, what, can you, is, what does fine tune mean again? Sorry, can you redefine that for sorry, me? Sorry, fine tuning simply means that in order to get the outcome, it requires basically a very narrow, narrow field. Like for instance, like in order, a, the, and the, the outcome fine, is the universe as we know it. No, to, for life to exist, just, uh, just life, life to exist. And so, again, you can go. We don't know. Maybe there's other life. And okay, that's an appeal to ignorance that I mean, people are welcome to take. Like we don't know. Maybe we don't know. Maybe. I, I'm my point there in the, the last little section was that if you hold this point as you guys have expressed it, there is no possible way for you be dis, to be dissuaded. But, For instance, uh, go ahead. That's not true. Like so. Okay. Okay. So, so let's, again, let's and I feel through. like I feel like we're gonna. I feel like I'm gonna give my um, rebuttal, and then you're gonna go back to okay. the entropy initial thing again. But it, but again, like when you keep saying like fine tuned, like this would be like me saying, let's say that I drop a bucket of paint on the floor, and it and it ha and it occurs in some pattern, not not anything that spells anything, but just there's a pattern of paint, and then the 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 act of spilling that paint on the floor the can be measured through an infinitely complex interaction of physics all the way down to the most complicated mm -hmm. forms of quantum mechanics right and that you could get mm -hmm. every type of scientist to interact the way uh, or to, to measure the way the paint falls through the air and interacts with the air particles around it and the interaction with particles and subatomic particles and sub 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 and, and quantum i'm sure you could an analyze this at every single level and that as mm -hmm. you would continue to analyze it you would come closer and closer to saying like wow like all of these conditions were perfect for the paint to fall in just the way that it did all of the conditions the only way the paint could have ever fallen in this particular way is for all of these conditions and every scientific field to be the way that it is. But the thing is, mm -hmm. you're acting like the way that the paint fell is something unique or special, I feel like. Yeah, well, well, again, for the, the analogy that I brought up before was the 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 balls falling in a, in a conceivable pattern right like there's there's some yeah but and, but again this is the dichotomy this is the dichotomy that i continue to reject you keep saying in a perceivable pattern i would not say okay. that life that exists today is in any kind of perceivable pattern it just what it, it's what is i don't have another universe to compare uh, any other type of anything to i just have what exists in this universe there is no other pattern I, i'm not comfortable declaring that this is why i say it feels like your argument is binary and i know you rejected that earlier but it feels like your argument is binary that the, ex the universe that exists as it does today is a past and that there are past universes but the chances of a past universe existing as opposed to a fail universe existing is infinitesimally small very 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 mm -hmm. tiny but i reject yeah. that i would say that every single conceivable universe is a past universe this is just the one that we have okay okay the reason i would reject past universes is because specifically like we we have put boundaries on either side like that, that was one thing we agreed on is the that there boundary, could be boundaries on either. Yeah, but the boundaries right. that exist right now are the internal boundaries that we have to this one universe that exists. Like e you, even the definition. that you accepted that if there's zero at atomic well, interaction. Well, I, I, I accepted that, but I'm still not. Okay, so there's two things. Okay, so one, I accepted that. Okay, but that's because I don't yeah. know. But I don't know if the physics is even settled on that. I'm not comfortable. But I mean, I have to because I can't okay. tell you that because I, I can't. I can't reject it, right? Because I don't have the background okay. to. But like, even if I do accept that, um, even if the universe as it exists today is highly improbable, doesn't make it impossible. Um, and then we would even sure. have to do a sure. form of analysis on what is the um, chances of a higher power existing and caught and willing all of this into creation versus a highly improbable event occurring. And I'm not even sure if you can take on that argument, although that would be much easier to take on once you've established that the universe that exi as it exists today could never occur or any type of universe could occur, which is essentially what you're saying, right? That this that this pre entropy yeah. argument is saying that no, that the chances of any universe existing are infinitely small. Yeah, but but, but yes, I, I, mean, I don't I don't so know here's, if I can see that yeah, it sounds I, like I've already lost the argument so I'm not no no no, no. I, I don't think you have I think the, the issue is that what we've what we've gone to is that you're you're saying you that I have no way of of saying this is impossible for life to exist in, and therefore I, I will not be able to come up with a fine-tuning constant I, I can't measure that or I can't claim it because simply I don't know what life could exist as and I that's that's your argument and so Sure. Um, let me let me take a different approach to to uh, combating this. So let's say that. Uh, sorry, I, I hear a little echo of myself. Um, there, let's say that there's a little 
a, a little voice that comes in. You're, you're, you're walking along and it says, you know, destiny, I am God, worship me, your birth date is blah, 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 and it gives you all these details. And then you go, huh. Well, that did sound like a string of coherent information. However, <laughs> I don't feel like know. I feel like we're gonna this example is the same as all that's the same problem with all the other examples. Is you're giving me like a pass fail state, like. Wait, no, no, no. But, but let me let me ask: uh -huh. is that is that type of information that that type of of fluctuating sound waves hitting your ear sufficient for you to go? Okay, you know what? I think it's more probable on 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 the probability that a god exists when I hear that. I mean, in this universe, if that were to happen, I would say, abs pro well, I would, there's probably a higher chance okay. of me being delusional. But I mean, sure, that could be probable that, that some god figure exists, sure. Okay, sure. So so if, like, off that ar argument, so if we find that the fine-tuning quantities are, are such that their improbability is greater than the, the fluctuating sound waves that, that approach your ear, if it's, if it's less probable than that, then we can conclude in the same direction. Can you restate that, or can yeah, you say that again? Sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. That was very unfair. That if the the sound waves hitting your ear, such as they they you hear, I am God, blah blah, are are enough for you to go. You know what? There's a high probability, or a higher probability than the negation that God exists. So if that is the conclusion you would reach, if, can we if, not? How about say like? That, how about let me let me add one more qualifier to this. If I can measure okay. those sound waves with an external device, I would feel more comfortable, like admitting this. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. Let's. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Just we, to make to, to rule out any kind of like mental illness or delusion. Yeah. If I measure with Absolutely. an external device the sound pressure level and the ESP well, comes back positive or some shit, and I see this, then yeah, I would be more comfortable saying this. Sure. Let's, let's let's say you can never actually rule out delusion. Is one of the problems of delusion. You can be delusional about reading your. Yeah, own, but but uh, I, I'm I'm appealing to some sort of external validation that other humans could look at this device yeah. and also yeah, see yeah, it's measured, right? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So I I don't I don't mean to be pedantic. Yeah. The, that's the issue there. Um. The issue there is let's let's. Take that, the probability of that happening, the sound waves fluctuating in such a, such a random uh, way to get that result. And let's say if we have enough prob probabilistic evidence that a like universe with atoms itself that interact uh, could exist is, is less probable than the sound waves, then our conclusion can also be towards a god existence. Probably, yeah. If that, But that okay. hinges back on that on that physics argument that I'm not sure is necessarily true or not. I would, I would well, have... okay, then, again, but then I would use the same thing to the voice. I say, we, we really don't know. It hinges on the physics of sound waves. Um, well, sound sorry. waves are something that oh. we understand today that we can like pretty clearly measure, or at least we have some understanding yeah. of them. And we, we understand can things like the low energy. This idea of, you know, if you get the message spelled out in the stars, God, I am here, you know, he names himself yep. and says, I'm here. So if you're saying, you know, wouldn't you at least grant me the fact that in that case, it would seem that God is a little bit more likely, right? Is that what you're basically trying to get? Yes, to correct, conceive? correct. All right. I would say that is even conceding too much ground, right? I would say, how can you be sure that you're not simply being fooled by another completely materialistic Ooh, cause? That being... Excellent. Ooh, okay. I love this counter argument because it absolutely science. So. Let's let's say you. Wait, because it absolutely science. what you you got cut off. It absolutely well, what science? Sorry, it absolutely blows well, it, a hole it, in all science. So in science, you work off probabilities, right? You come in with a hypothesis, you test it, and then you have confidence intervals, correct? Of course, yeah. Yeah. So let's say I come up come in with a conclusion. I say, okay, there's a 95% chance that the findings in this study were such that we reach the conclusion we do. And so someone else says, you know what? That's that's just that's not enough. That's not enough to to reach the the conclusion, and so we're we're not going to go with it. And I feel completely reasonable in rejecting it. Would you accept that type of response to scientific findings? No, because what you're appealing to is again this kind of so science, whether or not people like you know, it's a meme in this chat, right? Bayesian inference is what's really going on here. We're saying I'm collecting a certain amount of data, a certain amount of evidence, and that pushes my credence and my priors in a certain direction mm -hmm. of whether or not the yeah. proposition is true, right? right? My point to you is not saying that um, it makes God more or less likely. I'm saying you haven't even demonstrated that the supernatural can be a cause of physical events or exists, period. And what I know is by definition more likely because we know it exists are physical events and causes. So I would look to physical events and causes that would exist in the known universe before I would go to a God hypothesis. Okay, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, under, I understand what you're saying. So 
um, essentially, the, the issue here is like, let's say we are approaching a new scientific discovery and we, we test out a hypothesis and we find out the confidence interval, 95 percent. We're going in this this direction. Someone says, you know what? Here's the issue. In order for you to come up and propose this new hypothesis, we have to have evidence that this hypothesis is even possible before we use it as a possible conclusion. Like we cannot have this as a possible explanation unless we first have evidence of it. Do you see the vicious circularity you're going to fall into where you can't have evidence for God unless you have evidence for God, but nothing can count as evidence for God unless it first has evidence for God, but you can't count that no, as evidence I think unless you had evidence pre-existing. I think that's a pretty stark mischaracterization, right? For me to say that I am not going to accept the existence of a cause from a non-demonstrated being or source, Yeah. That's how is that not reasonable? I don't think okay, that so that's unreasonable. Yeah, so let's say, let's use the example of black holes. So uh, we're trying to discover if, if black holes actually exist somewhere in the universe. And we're, we're trying to, we, we reach the conclusion that we're 95% certain that, that black holes exist. Your argument would be such that first, the only explanations we should first allow are explanations we already know exist. Since we don't know if black holes exist, we shouldn't have them as an option on the table until evidence exists. And I say, wait, wait, this is evidence for it. And you say, no, no, no. We don't accept this because we first need to have evidence that black holes are possible. So wait, no, this is evidence. No, no, we don't accept that. Well, but but the pro okay, this so example wait, wait. is contradicted by the history of science. Wait, 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 hold yeah. on, no, no. no. I, there's a really, really good challenge to this, okay? Because w when you sure. say this, okay, if somebody were to posit the existence of a black hole, what they're giving you is a phenomenon that can't be described. And 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 that thought process that and Koei can correct me if I'm wrong. That thought process that you just gave is probably the initial thought process that astrophysicists went through when somebody says, exactly. "Hey, maybe there's a black hole." Well, no, I don't believe in that. Or let's let's test a million other possibilities against it, and then when nothing oh, matches, yes. then a black hole is created. Yes. However, Excellent. but but. but my question yep. to you then is can you name a single process by which you argue that God is the cause of it that no known physical processes right now can explain? Yes. I have to point this out. The analogy in this specific situation is yeah. me saying, uh, you know, we, we have this gravitational phenomenon that we're experiencing, that we're seeing in the data we can't account mm -hmm. for it in the current models. There has to be this thing. Someone goes through, does the math, finds these vacuum solutions, and we say, oh, well, black hole is consistent with what we're seeing in the data. I guess that's what it must be, right? What people mm -hmm. do not do is then say, ah, well, actually, I believe that it's interdimensional pixies. And they okay, say, well, no, hand actually, hand we've got a model BTF called general relativity that is okay, rigorously tested, empirical, and borne out by actual data. We're not going to go with the pixies example because you haven't even demonstrated pixies exist. We have an ontology that works and exists. I, okay, the, the last line is actually the issue. Because first, you have to demonstrate it exists in order for it to be an option. Like that is viciously circular. It can't be an explanation until you've proven it exists, but it can't be proven to exist until it's an option to be considered an explanatory phenomenon. Like you, no, you have this, this circularity. Wrong. I did not have to assume that black holes existed before I came to the conclusion. Can they be an option? Can they be an option? That's not how science works. We don't work in a preset of options that we say. Not preset. We well, no. underlying on. We just, and Destiny said a, a million options. We have well, million even options even if we acknowledge that black holes exist as an option, I think that any reasonable person, coagulation included, would say that God exists as an option right now. I would I would certainly okay. say that. Yeah, but yeah, the problem sure. is there's just no materialistic evidence for it whatsoever. Okay, okay. But, like, let's say that we say the probability against chance being an explanation for the universe is, let's yeah, just for the sake of argument, say, yeah. hang on, hang on. Just say for the sake of argument that okay. the, pro the probability that chance is the explanation for the fine tuning of the universe, just one moment, is one out of ten to the tenth to the one hundred twenty. So, yeah, sure. Can we rule? Can we rule it out? I don't think you can rule it out. But even if we, I, oh, there's like a million the problems with this. Okay, but like, but like the first thing is that even if we rule this out, um. Even if we rule this out, hold on, fuck, sorry. Even if we rule this out, um, what's to keep me from saying, okay, well, we live inside of a simulated universe then instead of a god figure existing? Okay, yeah, so the, the uh, philosophers would actually go, I mean, you can't, like, this is Descartes, I think, therefore I am issue. You really can't get past Descartes' demon, like a demon tricking you. You sure. really can't get so past So then how does this even the, help us at all? Is, do we have any reason to to go okay our our experience of reality is fabricated no well then i have i have no reason to to go with that other conclusion like it doesn't it's not oh. enough for me to defeat my experience okay but then my with well, how can i not apply that same argument in in a circular way to god then like i have no Excellent. reason so, so, to believe okay yeah go ahead yeah 
Yeah, no, I absolutely, I absolutely understand your, your, I think I understand your, your issue with it. Like the, the point I'm trying to make is that if we hold your framework for how to reach conclusions, then whatever preconception I go into an issue with is what I must hold throughout it all. And like, even if all the explanation, all the evidence is against it, I can still go, you know what? I simply lack data. We're going no, to wait this is not. This to, I yes, think this is again, a, well, a hold on, hold on. That's a, a really point. bad mischaracterization of how science works. I think right. Exactly. We, we create a framework by which we understand things. Okay. This framework should explain everything that we can observe. Right. If we observe something that cannot be explained no, no, by no, said no. framework, then we change the framework in order to match it. Right. But right now, the, what I'm and I'm going back to a question I asked before. I need yeah. you to give me an example of something that God does. That that does that can't possibly be explained by our current framework. That's what would cause me to reconsider the framework as it exists today. For instance, um, maybe Newtonian gravity might be an example of this, right? We understand gravity super well. Newton figured it out one hundred percent. Well, when we measure things in different mm -hmm. ways, it doesn't start to make sense anymore. Now we look yeah. to frame to something that is external that framework, such as quantum mechanics, right, to to explain these things. So I need you to give me a phenomenon that exists today that you think could point towards a godlike figure that can't be explained whatsoever by a current framework. Rather than the okay. initial point of the universe maybe made it highly improbable for atomic particles to interact with one another. Let, let's say I'm a really crappy detective and I, I go to the scene of a, of a, <laughs> yeah. a death and, and I, I approach the scene of the death and there is a knife sticking in the back of the person and there is, you know, blood, the, the name of the killer is written in blood and said, I did it for these reasons. And there's video evidence of someone leaving the scene of the crime. And I believe that there's only naturalistic explanations. Okay. And someone says, okay, I, I think this is murder. This is a, a personal agent did this. And I say, okay, you're jumping to way too many conclusions. You say, well, okay, there's a knife in the back of the person and there's blood on the wall in, in this pattern. And I say, well, we just don't have an explanation yet of how this can happen naturally. But that doesn't first. That doesn't mean we can we can rule out naturalism. And you need to prove to me. Okay, that it is I need you to make this. I need you. To, well, I understand your analogy. I need you to make this analogy work now. Can you tell me what in our universe is the equivalent of the knife sticking out of the back? That's what I. That's what I need yeah, you to make this analogy yeah. work. So, so again, the. Chance, the simple chance of this this solar the whole solar oh, okay okay I understand so we go knife, we go back to the initial knife. probability thing yeah, yeah. of the universe well any, any any there's a bunch of different probabilities but the simple fact is a knife randomly appearing in the back of a person by particle collision is more likely than the solar system which is more likely than the low entropy conditions like there there's okay but, I, but I, again I like you you you're, you're, you're side going back to this yeah. cosmology argument saying that it could not possibly occur naturally no, no, no. or no, that that's it's, my point. it's overwhelmingly it's likely that it can't have happened well naturally. like the thing the thing is that like no, i no, could no 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 no, oh, no, no 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 sorry no you guys keep saying that my point is it is not possible that this happens naturally that is not my claim for instance in the case of the murder in the, the, i would say it's a murder in the case of the murder i cannot disprove absolutely 100 percent that it is impossible that a physical natural explanation was the result of the per that results in the person's death i cannot prove that there is no feasible way that that's possible right. and so, so you you are like, comparing the likelihood that that person was stabbed and murdered with mm -hmm. the existence of your god i'm saying that that comparison of probabilities is inherently disingenuous and completely unsupported by the empirical evidence okay uh, elaborate that is ex as concise as that statement could possibly get Okay, okay, well, the, okay, the, the uh, difference the, is that he disagrees is... on the initial conditions of the universe. Yeah, where... like, I, which, I think, which, like, okay, so if you think that this is such a problem, an outstanding problem in cosmology, why are none of the working cosmologists looking at this as a way to solve the problem? I, I think I think even Stephen Hawking said if, if there's an argument for God that it's very hard to explain. It's it's in the, the fine-tuning area. But again, I don't want to get into this because this is like, let's say suddenly sure, everybody yeah, agrees with me. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's say everybody agrees with me. Would that, this is bandwagon fallacy. I, it wouldn't prove me right, even if all the astronomers agreed with me. That that wouldn't be sufficient. But let's argue the evidence. Let's stick to the evidence for now. Well, right well, now. well. The problem is that the evidence exists in, in an area that I don't even know if coagulation could theoretically debate this. Like we're talking, like if we want to debate like the exist, mm -hmm. like the initial conditions of the universe. This the prerequisite knowledge of physics to have this conversation. Like at the very least, very very yeah. far out exceeds exceeds my qualifications. True. And if you which don't is, have like high hardcore PhD research related areas yeah. in these backgrounds, it probably outstrips yours as well, right? Like. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so like is, wait, earlier, I just want to take issues because you you called it a bandwagon right. fallacy. It, it made it sound like you were making a fallacious or, or saying it's like a fallacious appeal to authority as well. Like I think it's perfectly reasonable to defer to research-related physicists on highly. Yeah. 
you're you're correct. You're yeah, correct. yeah, okay. Um, okay. Yeah, sorry. No, you're, you're absolutely correct. It's it's not a strict bandwagon fallacy because bandwagon fallacy in the strictest sense would be just me polling people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As opposed to saying a qualified that's, person. That's not what I mean. I mean, like, like physicists yeah. disagree with each other, sure. and people have people have tried to explain the fine tuning of the universe. Like, this isn't this isn't me just making up an argument. This sure. it, this does actually exist in, okay. in cosmological. Can I circles. can I ask a question? I, for, I, I'm just curious how you would analyze this universe. Like, I feel like you could have a universe that exists, okay? And mm -hmm. in this universe, um, a solar system is created, and the entirety of that solar system um, is literally an information processing center. That solar system is capable of perceiving some stimuli, say just light. Say it can only perceive mm -hmm. light, okay? And then okay. it is capable of making some determinations or decisions about the light that it perceives, and it is capable mm -hmm. of accelerating itself in certain directions, right? That, that's all the system is yeah. given, right? That this system, yep. we let's argue it has the sufficient um, intelligence to um, be self-aware, that this very same yep. universe could be thinking like, well, there must be a god, there's no other universe that could possibly exist that is so much different than I, where entire solar systems aren't intelligent beings like very clearly like a godlike being exists right you, you could make that same argument to that system that just because that system can't conceive of a of an existence of our own doesn't mean that that existence is impossible that that dichotomy right. is not if, fair to establish right if that was my argument but that's not my argument destiny my argument is not that no possible universe could exist like this or it's extremely unlikely that a universe specifically like this could exist again this, this well, is it's, it's really hard for argument. me I, i'm and i'm sorry if i keep mischaracterizing your argument but again even after i made this complaint the first time that all of your examples always point to a pass fail dichotomy in the next example that you just brought right. up you did it again where you said the knife in the back of the person you were talking about right. a rigid dichotomy that exists that is in a clear mm -hmm. past state and then you're using that as your analogy to the currently existing universe like what exists now must be which is circular logic my, right if you say that the well, universe no, my, that exists right now can only exist in, in all the preconditions that we've seen i of course have to agree with you but the difference is i don't think that the universe that exists right now is anything special and i feel like we're looping back to the again i i actually gave you that statement uh -huh. I, I said sure let's say the universe is nothing special but can we at least agree there is a threshold with in in the well yeah and then the threshold, threshold goes back to the okay so i think that we've kind of like, circled I, back I, on I this put, i put a yeah i put a far my my issue with the murder was not with the probability my issue with the murder was with your methodology okay and your methodology would be the murder with the, the detective coming and saying i don't believe human persons you need to first prove that human people can murder and go okay here's some evidence and then, no 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 you first have to prove that they that human murders exist in order for me to take it as evidence okay wait wait here's some evidence no i'm not accepting it because it's not an option on the table until you sure. first prove it's true. Well, and I said, okay, okay, okay. Well, well, yeah, before I don't want to, I don't want to. Look at this evidence right here. Yeah, I don't want to dig in. Look at this evidence right here. Okay. And you say, you say, okay, the the knife in the back, we don't yet have an explanation for it, but we shouldn't jump to a murder of the gaps theory. That's ridiculous. Like, no, instead, we should we should leave it open to naturalistic explanations until such time okay, as one so arises. Okay, so okay, okay, well, I think this, this analogy is. Sorry. So, I can't. I, 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 wait, hang on. I sorry, like I interrupted crazy, Destiny a whole bunch. Oh, wait, can I, 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 can I just ask, can I just ask one Destiny. question? Uh, or, or okay, I have two questions actually. Okay, here's my first question: Is do you have yeah. any other materialistic example of the existence of God other than the very specific thing about the initial conditions of the universe? Yeah, yeah. I actually, I actually go with about ten different, uh, it's eight syllogistic arguments. Uh, a couple other non. Are all of these arguments. going to be like hard? Well, okay, because this kind of gets into my no, second question. Science. Well, because this kind of gets into my second question. My second question is, for something that mm -hmm. exists in such an all-encompassing way, at least as I would argue mm -hmm. that God does, does it ever yeah. seem strange to you that your arguments to kind of prove its existence have to be so insanely hard to grasp and so insanely oh. out there compared oh, to... Oh, yeah. That, so, yeah, th this makes sense. So, um, th I would say that the whole reason I actually brought up the teleological argument was back to the free will issue. So, this wasn't as, a, as my go-to argument for the existence of God. This was as my my contention about free will not being able to exist and uh, and then not being able to truly reason if you can't choose between options. If you can't choose between sure, options, but we can't, you can't really, reason. But we can't discuss free will if you're religious and I'm a-religious because obviously you have a way to get to free will that I can never acknowledge because I don't acknowledge the supernatural, right? So we can never go anywhere right. in this argument. Well, I, I think if, if we acknowledge that free will exists and free will is not on atheism, then God, then atheism would be false. Like we can go with the modus tollens argument. Wait, if you can you say that again? If 
Yeah, so if, if we say, you know, on atheism, free will is not possible, but free will does exist, therefore atheism is false. Like, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, sure. But I, but, I, but then I never accepted that even if you prove that free will exists, I don't know how that disproves yeah. atheism. Oh, well, unless you... Well, you unless just said it's not possible on atheism. Oh, sure. Okay, then yeah, then sure, I guess. If, if your way to get to free will is via yeah. a supernatural cause, sure. Yeah, I mean, so, so that was why I went to the teleological argument. I think that actually when I generally discuss this issue, I go with much more like non-scientific. Sure, okay. So then this does get really esoteric. For, yeah, for simplicity's sake, what is your least esoteric yeah. argument for the, what is your most materialistic, I am a hard-headed man of science that cannot see anything past uh, what my devices can measure. What is your like most hardcore <laughs> go-to, I'm going to nail into the wall on this materialistic argument for the existence of God or higher power? Okay, uh, two, and I... I mean, I, I know you're going to take issue with these. Uh -oh. but let me explain it. If, if yeah, let me explain it. If if they do, okay. one is the objectivity of moral values, which is the, the email I sent you. Is I take I believe that objective morals exist, and I think uh, that you can only have a transcendent cause for objective morality. Well, the okay. Is well, it, so let's just focus on this. So morality is already sure. something that is away from science. Science doesn't answer questions of morality. Do this you believe morality? There is such a thing as something being good and bad. I, absolutely not. No, I totally reject that. I think you need oh, okay. religion so, to get there. So or, raping, okay, so raping a child for fun, not bad. In terms of the universe as an observer of this, no, I don't think that, the, that you yeah, can make an so, independent ob observation and declare that bad as the universe. Now, as people, we would okay. say that that's bad, but not not in any independent yeah, yeah, sense. That's like, that's like me saying I don't like the flavor of bananas. Like, I mean, it's it's the same level. It's raping a child, just like bananas, same thing. Like, there, there's it, not it, much. It, when, you're, when your frame of reference is the universe making this judgment, yes, I would argue that yeah. there it would okay. be like any two okay, atoms so, colliding or any other physical process, right? Sure. Okay, so there's there's a couple routes that, that take issue with this. First, I, I think we, we do have the sense of a moral intuition. I'm not going to simply argue for moral intuition. But would you agree that we have this, this innate belief, excuse me, innate belief that there are things that are objectively really right and objectively study. wrong, regardless of the observer. Objectively like right person, and wrong in relation yeah, to yeah, morals person, or in relation like, to... Yeah, let's say that Nazis won out and they brainwashed everybody and the disabled deserve to die. Do you believe that people would go, you know what, even if that happened, I would still say that the Nazis are wrong. Like that, that, that still is, there is still a wrongness to it. That, that exists in the natural world independent of like human judgment i mean just that it's objectively wrong independent no of, no i would never say that no okay okay so it's not wrong for instance to as we said it's not really wrong to to rape a child for fun so that's, okay that's not really <laughs> i know that wrong. we keep going to extreme examples so my argument would it's be it's not extreme there's no such thing as extreme for you okay that would require objective <laughs> okay no 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 okay hold on hold on it's okay that if the universe is observing these things that a person a a 50 million inch dick raping a child would be the same type of just random physical process as lightning striking the ground or two uh, uh, yeah. subatomic particles colliding with one another or the planets yeah. revolving around, that all of these are just physical processes that the universe itself does not make a judgment that there is no intrinsic there is no right or wrong true, property true, true. these are human right, patterns no, no. that we assign to things yeah okay is my okay again, my full saying, if atheism is again you're saying if atheism is true then there's no objective truth i'm, I'm asking you right here uh -huh. do you believe that human beings have this innate belief that things are actually objectively right and wrong independent of i don't like the use of the word objective there but i would argue that humans can have intuitive moral values i would argue that our intuitive okay, sense of moral me... values comes from an evolutionary point of view but go ahead Excellent. Okay, so this is uh, called the, uh, I mean, there's a reason many philosophers in the field of um, moral, moral, uh, this, this moral debate mm -hmm. actually go with, like the actual ones publishing go with objective moral values and have to try to try to justify some way. Because whatever argument you're about to use against the objectivity of moral uh, observation can be used against the objectivity of sensory experience. Okay, can you explain real quick? Yeah, yeah. So, like, let's say, as, as you just did, that evolution is the reason we believe this is right and this is wrong. Okay. I could also say evolution is the reason I believe that this is up and this is down. Oh. I believe that this is left. Yeah, I totally right. agree with that. And sure. All of that. I, I would even okay. concede that so, the universe as we observe it might not exist in the way mm -hmm. that we observe it. The same way that a computer desktop doesn't really resemble the underlying code. It's just a graphical user interface. I would totally, I would concede that immediately. I, I would never know if the way that humans observe the universe is the way the universe actually is. Um, now, I could speak okay. in degrees of probability because of independent tools we've made to measure it. But yeah, I, I would acknowledge that immediately. Sure. But, but I mean, all those tools of measurement have to sensory experience. For like, sure. Yeah. That, and I totally acknowledge. Point. Yep. I totally acknowledge okay. that. Yeah. So for the same reason you object to objective moral values, can you say that you object to objective sensory experience? So I believe this gets into um, 
I, is this starting to get into like um, scientific anti-realism? Is that kind of the direction we're headed here? Are you? Familiar? Uh, it does. It does. Yeah, it does. Eventually yeah. so get into these, like Platonic realms. As it, sure. As so these are but. these are statements that may or may not be false. I'm just generally not concerned with them. But but yeah, I, if somebody were to say to me that um, the entire universe as we conceive it is actually an, it, it, it exists in such a way that we cannot even fathom because we don't have the necessary sensory organs to perceive, I could never disagree with that statement. I, I can't possibly disagree okay. with it. Yeah, yeah. But you can rule out the existence of God. No, I've never ruled out the existence of God. Oh, okay, okay. So, so like, okay, let's, okay, excellent. I, I thought you had because, said, like, and again, all, to, all evidence points against it, but... Whoa, whoa, but, hold on. Those are two different statements. I would say that. I would say that right I, now there is no reason to believe in God. So, but I, but I would there's say... There's no reason to believe in your senses. Sure. Well, I mean, okay. I have. Well, so, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, wait, because because now whoa, we're, we're now we're acting. On. Hold on, because now we're acting like this is a binary statement. So, for instance, if somebody were to come to argue to me and say that there are no reasons to believe in their senses, I would say that I mean, I could see an argument for that, but that, but I mean, I have more of a reason to believe in my senses than I do in in anything else, right? So that okay. I don't believe okay, that's wait, a wait, binary wait. yes or Why? no. Why? Because it's Why? what I person. Because I think, therefore, I am. Because it's what I, as a personal observer, can interpret and experience. Like it's my own individual. But that doesn't apply to objective. That doesn't apply to moral values. Why not? Because moral values have nothing to do with my personal subjective experience. What do, what do you mean? Wait, don't, didn't you just say that objective moral values exist? Because you reject objective grounds that it, it, it's the result of evolution and, and uh, in this universe it, it doesn't really matter but you say that you are justified in following your sense experience but not justified in following your moral sense experience well Why? because the sense Why experience is in my opinion i guess or maybe we'd have to justify this sensory organs exist just to perceive the universe not to make statements of good or evil those are in my opinion philosophical questions that we rationalize couldn't i simply uh -huh. okay couldn't i simply say that you have a moral sensory experience that perceives objective moral sense in the same way that sure, you have. Sure, but then I would have to, I would have to ask you to give me some framework by which to analyze this moral thing because I can already an analyze most of these senses as something that exists in the realm of biology which applies to a ton of other creatures and this framework is something that is very well accepted by a ton of scientists and, and I can apply it to several other creatures but now I have to ask you to give me some framework that applies only to humans that we, like th I feel like that is a much tougher argument for you to make than for me to make. Uh, sorry, you'll need to elaborate a little bit. On so that. if Let's you're trying to tell me that my subjective experience can somehow be used to prove morality, right? My argument would be, mm -hmm. well, I can analyze morality or my intuitive feelings of morality under mm -hmm. an evolutionary framework. So for instance, um, I will not kill my offspring because of evolutionary descriptions, right? Because of, because I have a kinship bias towards um, propagating my own um, DNA. This is an observation that I can share with other humans, that I can share with things in the animal world, that a framework exists by which I can uh, describe this across a multitude of cultures a multitude of times and a multitude of species so then I would have right. to ask you you're saying that this that this same kind of experience can describe some like that, that, that this actual this intuitive this intuitivism um, or intuition mm -hmm. comes from some yeah. internal moral clock that how yeah. why where do you get that from how do you describe how do you say that I, I mean so I mean the simple argument would be um, from the, the syllogism I provided earlier, if objective moral values exist and atheism is false, you have to have transcendent. So wait, I, so I does this all go, go back to the teleological the, about doubting the no, no, initial no, 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 conditions no, no, of no, the no, universe? Or? No, this is completely separate. You simply, if if naturalism, if uh, atheism is true, then objective morality does not exist. If objective morality does exist, then atheism is false. Like, sure. so okay, wait, simply, but I'm asking you, not, how, so can you restate this for me then? How do you get an objective yeah. morality? How, what is your argument for the existence of an objective okay. morality? Okay, I, I think that you, you run into a lot of a lot of problems if you reject the the issue of moral uh, sensory experience, but accept physical sensory experience. Like every again, every argument you are you are will have and are going to argue against moral sensory experience can be used with equal efficacy against uh, physical sensory experience. Okay, hold on. So Let's say that you, I and, and, just just in, in this in this specific it, point. Let's say that I have a forest, okay? And in this forest, mm -hmm. I have trees that fall over and crash into one another and rocks that tumble down. Can you give me moral statements about what's going on in this forest? Uh, I Probably not. I'm, I'm not sure what you're saying. Okay, so let's say that a tree falls over in a forest and lands in another tree. Can you make a yeah, moral yeah. statement about that? I, I don't think there's, I don't think it's moral or immoral. I think that would be amoral. Okay, so then why can't I take that same thing and apply it to human statements? That there is no objective. Oh, oh moral. Yeah, yeah, I understand. 
Yeah, you, you know, you can. The issue I'm, I'm having is, is the arbitrary cho- choosing of I want to trust physical senses and say they are objective, but I don't want to trust moral senses and say they are objective. Well, because but, physical uh, senses oh, are, are because oh, these are two on. totally different things. The physical senses are our ways that we believe is our way of, of analyzing the physical world, the materialistic world. Yeah. A moral, moral sense, sense. The way we analyze the moral world. But I, but this is this moral sense. We don't even know if this really exists. We have like can an. I, can okay. I just chime again, in real quick? Again. Here? Sorry. I, one. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I've talked a lot. Go ahead. Okay. So this idea about your your choosing to take your physical senses seriously is an arbitrary thing. Is that a fair characterization of what you're saying? Yes. Okay. This th- this is not fair, right? For me okay. to say that I, it's so, in philosophy, we, we would call something like this a properly basic belief. Yes. I have no other choice but to accept my sensory experience as real, right? Now, whether or not scientific realism or anti-realism is the true and correct position, you know, whether or not my scientific models are actually describing the really true trademark world, or it's just a set of useful predictive WTF, models, doesn't I believe in really God matter. Now, they help. work, they're falsifiable, they provide me with predictions, right? It's the same thing with saying, can you prove that you're not a brain in a vat? Can you prove that hard sol- solipsism is wrong? No, no, no actually, but you're not no, going to accept is... that as a real possibility. I mean, you don't no, believe I, your life. I, true. I, this is my point. Is, is I, I actually agree with you there. I actually agree on that point. The issues you've introduced to defeat are, so, so those who are listening, the pros, proper basicality issue that you brought up is actually at the core of this, is, is you can have properly basic beliefs that have no grounding outside of themselves. We, we accept them at, at, at a fundamental level in order to build off of it. Now, my, my point is, I, I absolutely agree that, that our physical sensory experience is properly basic. But I would also say if you introduce a defeater to to the moral sensory experience, you introduce the same defeater to the physical sensory experience. And my point is I can accept both and say that I'm not going to arbitrarily reject one and not the other. I'm not a solipsist. I'm, I don't believe that I'm the only physically existent being in the world or conscious being in the world. I'm not a solipsist. I'm going to I'm going to actually accept both without an arbitrary designation between the two. Well, but I feel like th- that you're equating these two in a way that's not fair. So for instance, if every single human were to die right now in your world, yeah. it sounds like this moral this moral existence would vanish and the physical one would carry on. Well, I'm not an atheist, so I don't I don't believe that the, the physical world is all there is. Or the or the moral world would carry on but just nobody would ever interact with it at all, I guess. If, if all humans were to be deleted from the planet, or like, let's look at Mars, right? You would argue that there is no morality on Mars. It's just the, the physicality or whatever, right? For rounds, this gets a little more complicated, but uh, just as, as an objection, it gets more complicated in how I would address it. The, the issue is I don't think there's a physical moral universe imposed over a physical, physical universe. And that if one disappears, the other just kind of floats. Yeah, I, I guess I like the problem is that like I can describe like I can extrapolate your entire yeah. moral universe or whatever from my physical yeah. one very easily. I can insanely easily extrapolate your entire moral universe from my physical one, but you can't give me any evidence or any example of the existence of said moral universe whatsoever at all. Again, like you're, you're, it's again, almost unfalsifiable. Like my my point was the proper basicality. You agree that we have moral moral intuitions. Now you said these are the results. Yeah, saying, but the, but these moral well, intuitions, but these, results, but these yes. moral intuitions arise from physical processes. I, I'm not saying I don't I don't agree that Wait, these are yes, separate. But our physical our physical senses arise from physical processes too, and so then we could simply say they are no longer objective either. They're completely subjective. Your perspective is absolutely subjective. There is no objective view of the universe. Sure, but so, then like we so, work okay. in degrees of probability where I can I can uh, I can talk to every other human being on the planet, and we can come to some mutual understandings about our well, physical. Well, not really. If you start if you start undercutting the objectivity of sensory experience, your observations of your interactions with other people are no longer well founded either. Like you, you you lose the ground on which you stand to make the objection as soon as you do that. Wait, 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 wait. So let's say that I get a million people together and we all look at something and we can yeah. all agree that it's is a certain um that, that some that oh, one object is taller yeah. than another object. How is how is this mm-hmm. not giving a little bit more credence to the idea that my sensory perception is somewhat valid for the physical world? How do you know that a million people agree with you? 
Okay, but I mean, like, if we want to go down this level of absurdism, then I feel like we're almost right. we're, we're almost getting into nihilistic problems. Yeah, but you're but you're making right this now. a binary thing, like because I can't give you, and I feel like this is almost every argument you've made so far. Maybe you have different ones, but like if I can't give you like the concrete one hundred percent proving of of my particular idea, like down to like this insanely mm -hmm. fundamental level, oh, no, no, then no, no, all no. of a sudden all f all forms of thought are equally valid. That if I can't prove oh, no, to you no, that no. my no. conscious subjective experience is like the objective way to measure things, well, if you can't prove that that's the best way to do it, then everything else becomes valid. Like some sort of moral radar that you haven't even oh, really no. given a definition for then I, I think you're misunderstanding my my point my, my point is rather simple you you have a moral intuition and you have a physical intuition and the defeaters for both the defeater for one is a defeater for the other on on atheism and so if you want to reject objective morality from our, our moral intuition say it is the result of blah 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 that same thing can be used with equal okay efficacy. let me give you let me give you like a here. let me give you a thought experiment you tell me okay i want to test if gravity is real okay mm -hmm. i take a rock yeah. and i drop that rock on the ground okay and i see that happen and i say that's uh -huh. a good enough physical test for me okay now let's say i want to do a moral test is stealing wrong how, how could i possibly test something like this you you compare it to your moral intuition the same way you you just everything you just said about the physical experiment went through your physical sensory experience which we now have a defeater for on atheism that you've introduced against the moral intuition namely biological evolution now i'm not i'm not rejecting biological evolution okay like, wait so can you can you just finish for both. yeah so can you give me an example of how i would test for stealing being wrong being morally wrong I, I, my point is that it goes to the proper basicality of your moral so Same it's just whether or not it it's just whether or not it feels no, no, no. bad? No, no, that's the the point is I mean, yeah, the, this intuition the same way that all your physical the entire experiment you just set up goes through your physical senses. It requires you to have the properly basic belief that your physical senses are accurate. Now, you can introduce a defeater to the moral one. I'm just saying, if you want to remain consistent, introduce it well, to then, the physical one and you're not gonna like where you end up. Well wait, so can you can you answer the question then for how I would determine if the stealing is morally wrong? Like or or yeah, are, yeah, you, know, yeah, you could you, so yeah, you compare it to you compare it to uh, your intuition. Now, moral intuition can be off, just like physical intuitions can be off. But you that would that's how you would do it. You compare it to moral intuition. I, I have a fundamental question I have to ask here. Okay. Why are we just so in, especially in Destiny's ontology and my own ontology? I'll put my cards on the table. Why are we distinguishing between the physical uh, perceptions and the moral perceptions? Because in our worldview, those are the same things. Oh, Destiny says they one are, doesn't exist, the but the other does exist. The emergent property. Wait, wait. Of yeah, wait, wait. Sorry, no, 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 yeah, sorry. sorry. Uh, no, I, I, mis I mischaracterized you, Destiny. I'm, I'm, that's not what I meant to say. What my point was is that Destiny is doubting the objective framework, the objective uh, foundation for moral intuition. And I'm, my point is that you can you can argue evolution and how they emerge. That's the epistemology or that's the, the origin of it. This gets into what's called the genetic fallacy if you keep going down this road. The, the, the simple issue is this, if, if you want to start to undercut your objective moral intuition, you're going to have to, if, if you want to remain consistent, undercut the physical intuition for the exact same reason. So give me give me quick well, one well, reason. Course, this is such a straw man that if you if you are intellectually honest and admit, okay. I cannot tell you that my physical perceptions of the world are absolutely 100% true, then I can make no meaningful statements about the external, quote, objective world. This is just wrong, right? This is that's, a stupid yeah, that's way not of what I said. and I will say it. Yeah, that's but not it what is what it implies, and it, so every time I basically okay, don't go with implications. Something. You need if you're if you're going to accuse me of saying something, actually, actually, essentially diagram. You are, say, you are saying you are saying that admitting to the fact that we cannot say that the physical perceptions that we have are absolutely one hundred percent real, that it is a defeater of that position. That that's just it's technically true in a very narrow philosophical sense no one lives their life this way okay okay yeah no i i agree i actually agree and i actually would say that nobody lives our lives without the belief in objective morality like you simply like even the nihilists like sartre and uh um nietzsche actually don't didn't live the way their existentialist philosophy well what, what do you mean indicated. by that you can still live a moral life without believing in objective morality you don't believe that there's morality what do you mean you can live a whoa i didn't say i didn't believe there is morality i think that morality exists as as something that we've defined it to exist the same way that okay, um, right the same right so hitler is just as moral so not they they both thought they were living a
Well, this would be the it's, medical. Med, I think I, I think this would be the meta ethical position of moral relativism, right? Where, yeah, I would argue that Hitler yeah. was very moral under his own system. Sure, I'm very moral under my yeah. own system. You, I'm assuming that you eat meat. You're very moral under that system, and some people would condemn you as a mass murderer under that system, right? Other sure. people who so a woman that's gotten two abortions would be seen as a child murderer under a religious some religious people's moral systems. Whereas for other people, it's not a big deal. Yeah, um, but 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 yeah, I, I take a huge issue with saying that just because I don't believe in objective morality exists doesn't mean that I can't say that anything exists, right? Um, like, no, for instance, I can say again, that, like, the video game StarCraft exists as, like, a game, even if it's not, like, a nat like a 100% physical or, like, tag or hide-and-seek. These things might not exist in the natural world, but as human concepts, they exist, God for sure. Wind. Okay, but again, the, the issue is the way in which you discover these things funnels through that properly basic moral intuition and sensory intuition sure those, those two p pillars are how you perceive much of the universe now what you are saying is that you can have one and not the other you can have a sensory intuition about objective universe that actually is an objective universe and you feel it's objective that your sensory experience is objective and you go that route you can have a sensory intuition about the moral universe that actually morally objectively exists but that is false why simply because you apply the evolutionary explanation to one and not to the other my point is if you want to have an objective experience based on intuition and you say that there is an objective reality i guess i just i just all, i reject this idea that there has to, like i can extract i can get this morality um intuition like it feels arbitrary to say it. Like, for instance, like somebody could come here and make this argument that, okay, well, there is like the video game intuition. And this intuition mm -hmm. allows you to tell whether or not a video game is fun or not just based on your intuition. And you cannot yeah. possibly falsify this intuition existing because any any way that yeah, you falsify I, I, it can be used to falsify your own subjective physical experiences. Like, I, well, I would sure, argue, well, no, sure. that, that type of intuition. I don't have that intuition. I don't have that intuition. So okay, like, but then, but like, why, why, okay, here, can you answer this? Why is your morality intuition any more good than any other random intuition that I could invent that could also be extrapolated you, from my You did agree, you did agree that there was this moral intuition. Okay, but, but we're using, but you're using your definition and I'm using my definition. You're pretending that I've come to your definition. When I, when I argue of, of moral intuition, I'm literally saying that we intuitively, and when I say intuitive, yeah. I mean that we have like an inner uh, materialistic drive to act in certain ways that are probably advantageous for the survival of our genetic material, that that type of moral intuition exists. But, but that moral part is very socially and culturally defined, yeah. that it doesn't exist in any yeah. kind of, in, but, but I wouldn't say that that moral intuition intuition is at all equivalent to our physical analysis of the world so when, when you say that i've agreed that your moral that moral intuition exists i don't agree that moral intuition exists in the way that you're saying moral intuition exists right. so then no, back no, to I'm well then so then that, that standpoint okay so back to my uh, original thinking, question I, then why is your yeah. moral intuition any more valid than any other millions of intuitions that i could oh, invent that's that's not part of my argument that again this isn't that that's not necessary for the argument to exist my simple point is are there things that are objectively right and objectively wrong like simple simple fact objectively sure. right. sure so wrong, why would you say there are or are not why would you say there are things that are objectively wrong what, what is your argument okay. for that okay for the again for the same reason we have a we have an intuition that our physical sensory experience experience an objective world that that exists apart from our sensory experience objectively apart from this this individual subject in the same way i would say we have a moral intuition that an objective reality about morality exists and I'm, my my the crux of my point has been you cannot apply an argument to one to to dismantle it and say subjective morality exists supersedes the the issue of intuition and not apply that to sensory experience. Okay, but I feel like we're using totally different standards of evidence and falsifiability here. Like with my earlier examples, if I want to compare the weight of two things, I can have multiple mm -hmm. people hold things in my hand. We can do like a ton wait, of wait, different. But it goes through what? It goes through what? Sensory experience. Yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I just think that this argument is insanely disingenuous. Like, it, it feels almost like goofy. Like you're trying to say that because I can't 100% prove that my physical sensory experience is real, no, no, now no, no, I no. have to that, accept, or because you, I can't use an argument you, against it, I have to accept that all sorts of other insane intuitions exist. Use, yeah, you can use a, you can use an argument against it. My point is that if you want to remain consistent, you have to you have to at least turn your attention briefly to the issue of your sensory experience experiencing objective physical reality. Like yeah. that's your sensory intuition, right? Your sensory intuition is that there's an objective physical reality in which you you interact. Your moral intuition is that there's an objective moral universe in which you also sure. Okay, interact. but then I don't agree that there is an objective moral intuition. I don't agree that that exists 100% at all. Right. I know that's my point. But you, you would you agree that there's a physical 
interaction with an objective reality. Yeah, but but when I say I agree with that, I would say that there is a high probability for it because it's the only okay. thing that I can okay. possibly conceive. But that, but just because I acknowledge that that might not be true doesn't mean that every single other type of intuition all of a sudden magically becomes permissible. Like, So no, I can no, speak no. with a high degree of probability that that exists for a lot of reasons that we've all well, come to agree. So for instance, we can test things, we can verify things between two different individuals, between a multitude of individuals, and we can make predictions based off of these tests, right? Science, technology, and all of that, that stuff. But when it comes to more Moral intuition, I have a much harder time buying that that belief is real because it is untestable, unfalsifiable, unverifiable. That that there's just because like my my physical senses may possibly be betraying me doesn't mean that I all of a sudden believe that there is some objective moral intuition. Yeah, I'm, I'm really sorry, Destiny. I want to I want to hit the point. I'm getting a call. I need to take briefly. I'm sure. just going to mute myself. I really apologize. For yeah, this. no problem. Hello. Oh. All right, Destiny. I'm sorry. I do. I do have to head out. Um, yeah, that's I really fine. appreciate the discussion. Uh, thank you for for trusting that I wasn't a troll. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, maybe we can talk again in the future if I can hammer these points yeah. out better, or if you can hammer them out better, or whatever. Right. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, yeah, I'd like to like to elaborate on my position because I'm not the most articulate person. I get confusing at times, so I appreciate sure. you trying to understand me. So, All right. thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, have a good one, buddy. Talk to you later. Ah, oh, fuck. I feel like it hasn't changed from since when I was like 18. <laughs> like, it feels like all of the using William Lane Craig's script, like Wait, verbatim. Oh, I don't even know who that guy is. I just know that, like, when I made my journey from, like, Christianity to atheism, when I was trying to find, like, counter arguments for, or, or for arguments for the existence of God, all of them end up becoming, like, in, Here's like, some positive when you, when you first dive into it, having a discussion um, and not playing thanks, league. thanks, Namatim. Um, the, the, I feel like there are stages that you go into it, and one is the uneducated stage, which I would say I was at 16, 17, and in the uneducated stage, it feels like every single argument for God is just insanely convoluted, and that just bothers me in an intuitive way, like, the arguments are so so convoluted but then once you start to become a little bit more educated which i would say is the stage i'm in now barely educated ever right that when you can actually start picking out the arguments it just feels like every argument is insanely disingenuous like you're giving so much credence to your side and then either you're either like making these bad equivocations where if somebody can't 100 percent answer something on one side everything becomes equally permissible on the other or um yeah. you're, you're misrepresenting <laughs> i was positions. containing myself many many a time so this this is a formal name it's called the inflation of low probabilities fallacy mm -hmm. and he would do this routinely that Kappa if you would be if you or i were intellectually time. honest and said we could not prove uh you know to uh, you know, mathematical rigor of certainty yeah. that X or Y was the case. Ah, well, then you've granted me m my side of the argument. And yeah. You can't it. Which, it, which it feels like, um, the, and this people actually use this argument for a plethora of issues in real life, but like just focusing on the religion thing, like if we go back to his thing about the knife in the back, like, I mean, that technically could happen right it is possible that like an airplane you know somehow ejects a knife and it lands in a person's back like, it's incredibly unlikely but it could happen but just because we say that like that's not possible doesn't necessarily mean like oh well since you've granted that you know this must have been naturally determined now every single thing Friendship in my argument all God. of a sudden becomes now, equally Terraria permissible i feel like um friend. i feel like that analyzing things in, in a binary fashion is really cancerous because it misses like the entire point of all the arguments Yeah, I, I mean, so, and I mean, I, I know you didn't want it to feel like a dog pile, but like, especially the physics stuff, you guys don't have to believe me. You don't have to believe him. Go read the cosmology literature, right? This stuff is an open question that people are actively working on. You do not get to go full God of the gaps and say, aha, we don't have an explanation for this. And therefore, the most probable explanation is my God. Again, not only is that God of the gaps ignorance fallacy yeah it's also it's also not even fair it's it's literally unfair because you're saying i'm going to posit something that i haven't even demonstrated exists mm -hmm. as a cause 
but all of your models are just conjecture. And, sure. You know, the reason why um the reason why I, I'll, I'll never grant that much to a religious person, and I know it's tempting to, because you can always say, okay, say I grant you all of this, then prove your God is the right one, or prove that God actually explains this, is because that argument is monumentally easier than proving that there needs to be a God at all, right? I think that's the really difficult argument. Like, prove to me why a higher power needs to exist for this universe to function. But if you grant that a higher power exists, proving their particular flavor becomes much easier, I think. And I don't think it's fair to start uh, on that low of a footing in that in that discussion yeah so anyways i'll use this as a teaching moment for everyone <laughs> so just in case everyone like didn't know what he was talking about so what he was routinely invoking is what's uh, been deemed something called the past hypothesis in modern co uh, cosmology and it's this idea right that the second law of thermodynamics you might remember it from high school it's that the entropy of a closed system always goes up that's not quite true, right? That's that's true for irreversible macroscopic systems. But the reason that that law seems to hold on macros on the macroscopic scale is that the entropy of yesterday was lower than it is today, and the entropy of that before that day was lower and lower and lower and lower all the way back to the Big Bang. And for our models, the entropy of the initial state of the universe is just way way lower than it had to be to get the structure that we see in the universe today. So there's this uh, so-called fine-tuning problem, one of the fine-tuning problems. There are also other fine-tuning problems. Um, that's one of them. He's basically saying that God is the explanation for this. Uh, no, not really. There are plenty of other cosmological models. You can look all the way back to um, Shrednecki has done work on this. If you guys want to look up names, Shrednecki. Uh, Carol has, I think with his graduate student, Jennifer Chen, did some work on this. Uh, Hawking has done work on this with his Hawking Hartle state. Him and Jim Hartle have worked on this problem. So this is an open problem that people are proposing solutions to in limited form. Uh, it's it's just not fair to say that we have no idea what's going on here, therefore God, right? This, that's just not how science works. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I another, don't disagree. Uh, another thing that he was bringing up was the idea of Boltzmann brains. Again, I don't really know why he was bringing up the Boltzmann brains. It's this idea that... Uh, Given certain assumptions, right, you are more likely to just be a random fluctuation somewhere in space that kind of pops into existence and then pops out of existence just as quickly as you came with all your thoughts and memories and everything, you know, just a brain spontaneously forming uh, in space. Uh, this is actually a true consequence of certain cosmological models that we have. Again, this is an open question that can be solved based on what cosmology you pick, right? So depending on what you think the dimensionality of Hilbert space is, for instance, or whether or not you believe uh, the wheeler to witt equation, something like that is true, uh, tells you whether or not you'll get these uh, Boltzmann brains. So again, not really, it's oh, again, open problem in physics. People are working on it. Don't let theists tell you that God is the answer, right? This, this, is never, this has never been the case in the history of science. Let science do its job read the papers of people doing work in these fields. I really hate it when people take physics and twist it into their religious apologetics. It's incredibly annoying. And that's why I was a little heated <laughs> as, as people have pointed out in this discussion, because it's incredibly frustrating when people do this. Do you believe in, are you a materialist? <laughs> Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'll take that hot take. Oh, okay. good materialism all the way down. Thanks, buddy. Wait, are you really? Are you making fun of me? Yeah, no, I mean, I'm a scientist, right? Oh, Whether okay. or not I think it's... You well, know, be careful with that because I'm pretty sure I can literally find, like, neurosurgeons that believe... Well, Ben Carson that believe in God and shit, so... Oh, well, yeah. Okay, fair enough. I'm an intellectually honest scientist. There we go. Wow. Hot take. Uh, yeah, sure. I think, you know, I think the best model that we have of the world is uh, materialism, right? If you want to posit that there's something other than material, please demonstrate that in some way that I can routinely test, independently verify, and falsify. I will be happy. The falsifiability is a big one, too. Like, um, it was pretty... It's pretty frustrating when somebody makes the assumption that, like, um, you wouldn't believe in a, in a divine figure. Like, I would argue that I believe that most, if not all people, well, I wouldn't say all, but most people, atheists especially, would believe in a godlike figure provided some sort of materialistic rigor for one. But obviously that's never been demonstrated, so. 
or at least to my knowledge, it's never been demonstrated. I'm sorry, you, you cut out for me. It was just silence until that last sentence. What? Oh, sorry. Um, it's frustrating when some people assume that like um that that you're making like a declarative statement on the existence of God that you're saying for sure that God does not exist, and it's like, well, no, I think that most reasonable people, atheists included, remain agnostic towards that that position, right? That maybe God does exist or doesn't. Right. But like, yeah. there's just no materialistic evidence for it, like. So that was another particularly annoying thing that he continued to do, which was he established that we were both operating on basically a Bayesian format, right? We, we're not saying that we ever put zero or one as our credences, right? Mm -hmm. We're not saying that it's impossible or it's definitely the case. It's always degrees of belief, mm -hmm. conditional probabilities. Um, and then sometimes when we would give things up, he'd be like, ah, well, you're granting that, you know, you think that you, you uh, I think one of the things was he was saying that, you know, you can never... I can never prove God to you because you'll never take it. You know, you're ruling it out out of principle. No, I'm not ruling it out of principle. I'm just saying I would need more evidence, right? Mm -hmm. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Then why can my evidence, senses so not perceive it. it on this stream? Give me some evidence okay. to start shifting my priors in your direction. Which of course never happens, right? Yeah, never. We have well, the knife and it's and always the person's back with the blood trail leading to the car that leads to the guy's house, right? We have all of that. He has arguments yeah like, and like arguments really convoluted really esoteric really convoluted arguments at that which always bothers me as well one of the one of the things that i was really hoping that he was finally going to answer you on was how does he get objective morality right well if i you, was waiting for that well th this is why i don't like to grant because I think that if you've granted that the universe must have been created, I think you've lost the argument. Because when you're playing under that paradigm, I mean, I could probably formulate the arguments for like, well, if we acknowledge that the universe must have existed, here's my bullshit re rationale for why the Christian God is real. And then once I've established that, my moral system just follows, you know, circularly. Yeah, right? sure, I have the Bible right? to grant, yeah. It's always easy to come up with ex post facto justifications. Well, of course God would have done it this way, and here's why. I'm going to tell you, right? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and women can do this ad infinitum. Right? Uh, yeah, so, of course. Yeah, because you've already, yeah. You, I, that's why I don't, I never grant. I used to. That was like a mistake I made when I was younger. I used to grant the initial, like, okay, fine. Because you're know, being a, an arrogant 16 year old or 18 year old, right? Okay, fine. Let's say that the universe, you know, is fucking uh, made by someone else. Like, prove that it's your God or whatever. And it's like, oh, shit, dude, you get lost down that rabbit hole real fucking fast. <laughs> Unless you're like, literally like a fucking like phd theist like nah that shit is way too well because i could tell he was an, an acolyte of william lane craig I, I have a good feeling what his answer would have been right he was going to go with the divine command theory answer uh, which is sure, which is divine command. It. yeah right and you and you know about the euthyphro dilemma so i was hoping that he would bring that up and you would throw that in his face wait what is the euthyphro I, dilemma so the euthyphro dilemma says if you're going to invoke divine command theory, is something good because God commands it to be good? Or is it good in, of, in and of itself, in which case we can just skip God and go right to the thing that's good, right? Okay, I'm familiar with this. I just haven't heard the, um, I didn't know that that was a name for it. Gotcha. Right. And so then what the theist's response to this will be is, well, that's a false dilemma, right? There's actually three prongs. And it turns out that God in his infinite cleverness, right? Mm -hmm. He is his, by his very nature, he is goodness, right? This is total sophistry, right? It's a complete reframing of the dilemma to a completely degenerate case because the question then immediately shifts from uh, does God decide what is good or bad to did God have any control over his own nature? In which case, if you answer yes, well, then he could have chosen to have a different nature. And if you answer no, Morality is, um, again, independent of God. So, you know, morality in this case is either independent of God or arbitrary. They can't have both. Sure. That was some, that's something that bothers me with a lot of theists as well. And he, they, they always find ways to escape it. But, like, um, it irritates me that w one of the earliest ways that I figure that you can refute a lot of religious arguments is that um, the way that religious people win a lot of arguments is that they grant God a lot of very special properties that I'm not allowed to grant the universe. Um, like, I, he used one that I wasn't familiar with, which is that God just isn't whatever i want him to be i don't even know but like most people will say something along the lines like well like um the universe was created by god and then they'll say like and, and then i'll say okay well you know who created god and like well god is infinite and then i'll ask okay well why can't the universe be infinite and then you know we kind of it, it gets at, at um reductio or whatever yeah, or aggressive, like well, you yeah, I mean, so but then he was basically he found a way to like redefine god so that god i think initially he said he god wasn't a complex being um so he doesn't need to be created 
Yeah. yeah so they're, they're going to argue some branch of the ontological argument. They're going to say that God is a necessary being. Never mind that they've literally presupposed that their being is necessary. And okay, mm-hmm. great. Give me your 50 step modal logic syllogism yeah. that proves this conclusion. I'm not impressed. Again, I know he was doing the William Lane Craig stuff. He said he had a bunch of syllogisms that would prove this. I would have loved for him to bring up the Kalam cosmological argument because I could write a dissertation <laughs> on the Kalam. So, uh, yeah, I mean, definitely talk with him again. If you want me to come in, I'll come in. But I, I couldn't stand back while he was talking about all the physics stuff. And it was sure. All right. Well, hey, I'll talk to you later. Be careful. Stay safe.